are getting a little... Yeah, you, you should always be scraping this tip. This doesn't belong here, it belongs here. All right, no worries. I'm just saying whoever's responsibility. We are performing a spinal surgery live at Duke Spine. Why do you leave this nubbin of tissue? Okay. That's all ligament. Our patient, Large Bite, is here because he's injured his lower back and um, he has some scoliosis, which you can see is curved towards me, which this is me. But more importantly, he has back pain, deformity, um, and he wanted his deformity fixed. So we are performing a lumbar decompression to unpinch the nerves, because he's having leg symptoms of weakness, numbness, and we're going to derotate the spine and put it back into normal alignment, and then we're going to uh, fuse them. And this is uh, what's called a T-lift surgery, transforaminal lumbar inner body fusion. So there's the sacrum, okay? Obviously you wanna you know, avoid going between the lamina. You gotta suck for me, otherwise I'm gonna get a lot of, a lot of this um, blood product on my bovi and it'll stop working. Huh? All right, that's probably L5. And we're doing the L2 to S1. So it's an L2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 1. Four discs, four, uh, five levels, basically. Decompression, realignment, and instrumented fusion. This is a T-lift surgery. This is a lumbar decompression and fusion. Decompression means to get the pressure off the nerves because the nerves are being pinched. All right, buddy, check it out. You see how you get to the facet joint here? Yeah. And then you have the superior facet right here, lateral to it. You want to go to that and scrape along it. And just pop right over. I need sucking of the smoke. All right. So the first step in any surgery is what's called the exposure. And exposure means opening things up to get to where you need to go so you can do the actual surgery. With open back surgery, for those of you who watch my surgeries, we, we broadcast all of our surgeries live. You can see what a difference this is compared to laser surgery, the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Is the tip of this in the center of your field? Yes. It's not at the top? Uh, no. Can you show us the First person view, please, here in the OR. Thank you. Where is it? Is, does, can you see it? Does it look? This is right here, is at the top. Yeah, we don't want that. We want it in the dead center. So I need him to come back and fix it. I have Sunny come in. All right, so basically the incision for the laser surgery, if I were to do this patient's laser surgery marker, just to give you an idea of what the incision no marker, I need a pen. Thank you. If we were doing laser surgery on this patient, we would make probably at most two incisions this big. The whole surgery is done with a cut like that, and then another one right here. Two seven millimeter incisions, rather than this, meat and potatoes. But this patient wanted me to correct the deformity, the scoliosis, as much as possible, and I can't do that with laser. So we're not just treating back pain and leg symptoms, we're also correcting the scoliosis uh, deformity. And to do that, you need, really, really you need screws and rods. All right. Notice how I don't stab with it. I just get enough, close enough to burn it. Okay. So we think this is five, four, three, two. If that's the lamina of two, then the pedicle of two should be a little bit further north. Now we've cut through the skin and Dr. Patel has done 
most of the exposure himself and he's done an amazing job. Um, and you can use the Bobby on cut mode, which is the top button, to cut through skin, but you're not allowed to use the coag mode to cut through skin. You'll cause scar tissue, horrible scar tissue. So I think we're pretty close to where we need to be. And we have brought you guys in after we started the surgery. I'm gonna localize in a minute with the fluoro to make sure where we are. But look here, Dr. Patel, you see how you leave all this soft tissue? There's actually a bone there. And you're welcome to go down to that bone. It's always there unless they've had prior surgery, okay? And by doing that, it allows you to not have all this stuff you have to do later. Does that make sense? So it's everywhere. What is that bone? Do you know what it is? It's the pars. That's the pars in articularis. The lamina is just medial to it. So this is the lamina here, or on your side right here. You can see the lamina, but this right here is always safe because there's a pars there. All right. And then if you leave all this stuff, we got to eventually take it off to see the pars. We're going to cut through the pars. Yeah. What's going on, guys? All right. So the other thing we need to do is always go far enough lateral. See how there's a facet right there? We want to expose the superior facet by retracting and going a little bit further lateral. And the reason we're making such a wide exposure, folks, is because we're going to do an osteotomy. And we got to put screws in. And screws have to start laterally. Now there is a screw technique coming more medial and it's a newer technique, but I don't believe in that technique. I don't think it works very well, so I don't do it. Okay, I will never do it. Because it's the purchase of the screw is not as strong, despite what they're trying to show. It's really just a gimmick. There's a lot of gimmicks, unfortunately, in spine surgery that are designed to give companies a competitive marketing advantage over their comp competition even though the gimmicks don't really help the patient at all. They just brainwash doctors and people into believing. What's bleeding here? These surgeries are obviously lose a lot more blood. Bipolar, okay, there's a little bleeder lateral, bipolar. Where's my bipolar pedal? On the left, on the left. Yeah, it should be. Thank you. So bipolar, the tool I'm using, cooks tissue between the tips. And that's how we stop bleeding, we cook tissue. And the Bobi does the same thing, but it doesn't cook between tips because it doesn't have tips. The Bobi sends the charge out from the tip of the Bobi and it goes through the human body to a Bobi pad, which is on the thigh. And of course, as it spreads away from the tip, it disseminates. So the greatest amount of effect is right at the tip of the Bobi. Okay. How's our blood pressure? Suck here. Here. So the other thing you get, Patel, is if you don't stay on the bone and you start cutting through the soft tissue, you start cutting the art our little artery back here and it starts to bleed. Now I don't bother preserving the facet capsule on the levels that I'm fusing because it's unnecessary and it's not gonna help in any way. Fuck here. here in case you need it, sir. Yeah, we need to adjust this first person view. Suck please. So those of you wondering, why am I doing an open fusion? And by the way, this is an outpatient surgery. We're sending our patient home today. Um, we've been doing these surgeries outpatient for almost nine years now, here at Duke Spine Institute. We're the first in the world to do these multi-level fusions, decompression in the lumbar spine with reconstruction. We're the first in the world to do them outpatient. Outpatient means same day discharge. We're sending our patients home the same day. How is that possible? Well, other surgeons would keep these patients in the hospital for a week or longer. 
We're able to do it because of our technique, the surgical technique that I use and our pain management that we do and the anesthesia. So it's not one thing that allows us to do it, it's a combination of things. You all right? Huh? Sonny, you ready? All right. And where I'm working is definitely at the top, right? It's, it's, not, it's not good. All right. Here. Try to make this better for everybody. For some reason, it's very hard to get it right. Do you need me to lower my body? Is there a quick release we could use? Okay, Bobby. There's always a little vein or artery just lateral here to the pars. All right, so let's see what we got. This should be 5-1. Let me get these retractors in a little better. These are called retractors because they retract tissues, okay? Now in the laser surgery we use, I don't need it for patella, we use a tubular retractor, it's a tube. It's a skinny little tube, you've all seen me do that. And these are not tubular retractors, these are, they're called cerebellar retractor because of this curvature here. But they're very commonly used in neurosurgery, I'm a neurosurgeon as many of you know. So I'm used to using these kinds of retractors. And then uh, I need a, a wheat lander up at the top, we call it a weedy, to give some more visibility. All right, that's pretty good. Let's see what's bleeding here. Good, here. And anytime I see blood, I always stop it. Now, getting bleeding under control is challenging in surgery. Okay, we're gonna localize. Get ready with the fluoro. So, we got sacrum. That should be 5-1, pedicle of 5, pedicle of 4. This should be the pedicle of 3 here, is what I would expect. Let's get a fluoro shot, table up, fluoro south, go. So again, just like with laser surgery, anytime you do spine surgery, to know where you are and to make sure you're operating on the right disc and the right nerve root, the right foramen, you must use an x-ray machine to look at the spine, the bone parts of the spine. <sighs> Table up, fluoro north, uh, one inch, stop. Yeah, shot. So sacrum, five, four, three. We're at the pedicle of three. Look how much arthritis there is now at that facet joint. You see that, Patel? It's massive. And what I'm talking about is right where my um, my probe is touching that bone in the back is a giant facet joint, very arthritic. So this patient injured his discs, table down, down fluoro north. Make sure the fluoro is not resting on the elbows or arms, please. Make sure, check please, once she gets in final position. So we have to use the x-ray machine to, to look at the bones and figure out where we are based on the bones. That's the key to successful spine surgery is using the bony anatomy or the anatomy of the bones to navigate. And then of course, knowing your spinal anatomy so you don't make any mistakes. Cobb, all right. The exposure of this part of the surgery is always the, the slowest part, hardest part. We can hide these over here. And we wanna take our time and do it right. Dr. Patel's done a, a really, really spectacular job, yeah. So I need to go up one more to get to the pedicle of two. Help me see, right here, uh-huh. I need you to suck the blood. I need you to suck the blood better. You can have lean over if you have to. Yeah. Can you guys see okay? All right, let me see now. There's something. It looks like, where is it coming from? Almost here. 
coming like inner spinous. We said that's the pedicle of three, right? We still have to go up one more. You can see how arthritic this joint is. Uh. Any questions? We should be. No, no questions at this time. Skin knife. We should be live streaming. So for those of you who don't know, Duke Spine Institute, we live stream all of our surgeries every week. And we do that so people can watch and learn. Surgery is such a complicated um, treatment that it involves many, many steps and processes and it's good to be able to watch it and see what we do. So you can ask questions in real time. Hey, why are you doing that? Or what's that structure? What's that tool? So we give you the opportunity to learn from our surgery by watching it in real time and asking questions. How's my volume? It's good, we can hear you clearly. Thank you. All right, this is the uh, L2, um, L12 facet, and the L2 pedicle is just here. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna violate the capsule if I can avoid it. I'm just sweeping the muscles lateral and preserving the capsule. If I can preserve the capsule, I may be able to protect that area and keep it from being a problem. A lot of surgeons don't pay attention, they just violate it. I hate to say it because they don't know or they're not aware that how damaging it can be. But you hear about adjacent segment disease. Some of us believe that when you violate the capsule at the upper level, it can actually cause the spine to degenerate faster of adjacent segment. All right, so all these pedicles right here I'm sorry, uh, par parses are nice and exposed. Oh. Very good. Huh? And that's 5-1. So, starting to come together nice. Now we got to do your side. Let me see. Yeah, let me go ahead and work on it. More volume. I don't want to get in trouble with Facebook though. Maybe a little bit. Bada, you want to add anything? Well, we're almost done with the exposure. And then it gets interesting. We next move on to the laminectomy and then the osteotomy so you see that soft tissue there you know you're safe right. scraping on the bone here even though you can't really see uh, the bone and then you get to that facet right there see it yeah. and you just sweep you see how I'm sweeping right. and then you just gently release some of the muscle so you don't damage it and you sweep it and try to sweep over the capsule. So you preserve the capsule. Okay, but this one here we can take because this is being fused. A little sucky. That's the that's the uh, two three facet, right? So the three pedicle. The three pedicle will be right there, right where I'm at. That's the transverse process right there. See it? So you know just lateral to this facet, like at the inferior half is the transverse process. And you need that exposed. That's where your screw goes. Right where the superior facet and transverse process meet. Right here. There's always bone right there. And I can probe with it with my tip of my bipolar. You want to be careful in there because you can get a nerve root and damage a nerve root. You don't want to do that. 
so you really got to know what you're doing here something's bleeding maybe from the wall so you got to also know we we're talking about bleeding earlier suck here with bleeding um, how you stop it depends on the source okay of course it's a blood vessel but if it's bone bleeding versus artery bleeding versus vein bleeding is it an epidural vein is it a muscular vein Epidural veins, you use gel foam soaked in thrombin. Muscular veins, you use a bovi or bipolar. So the tool we use to stop bleeding depends on the source of the bleeding. And that's something surgeons are supposed to be trained to do during their residency. But unfortunately, I've seen a lot of spine surgeons that just uh, let the patients bleed. <laughs> I mean, not supposed to, but they don't care. They're too busy working on other things like, oh my God, where the hell am I in the spine? That's like what they're thinking about. <laughs> oh my God, what am I doing, right? So if you're too busy thinking, oh my God, what am I doing? You don't worry, you don't sweat the little things like bleeding, Bobby, okay? Which sounds crazy, right? But that's why there's um, surgeries like this up here, up here, that are done where the patient uh, loses a thousand milliliters of blood, two thousand, half their blood volume. Okay, happens all the time in big spine surgeries. That's why a lot of spine surgeons don't do big spine surgeries. They only do one disc at a time. So they end up, instead of fixing all four that are causing pain, they fix one. Well, fixing one disc isn't going to get the patient out of pain. That's why people still have pain after back surgery. That's why surgeons tell them you need more and more and more back surgeries. You need like four or five back surgeries out of control it's ridiculous you just need one you need it done right the first time so at Duke Spine we do it right the first time yeah looking good irrigation I want no big irrigation yeah let's just irrigate a little uh-huh just want to get all the juices now you can see all the muscle here right that's fat right there. Let me have a pointer. All right, so what are we doing? We've cut through the skin right here. Then you get fat. That's this, this stuff. And I'll show you a little better. It's yellow. It's just got a little bit of blood on it, but that's fat. More of it here, right here, fat. And then you got fascia, which is a tough connective tissue. Let me have a grabber. Uh, tooth rat. Sorry, a tooth pickup. And this is important, thank you. Because after surgery, this is what we have to sew right here. And the fascia is always right above the muscle. That's the muscle right there. So with our surgeries, we don't want to damage the muscle. We're just retracting it. Okay. Now, let me see a cob again. I may have to move these retractors further north on my side. I mean, at north, north side. Because I think we need to get up a little higher, yep. May need to put another cerebellar. You have a third one? There it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I may want to put another cerebellar here in the middle. This is a, a big surgery, by the way. And like I said, there's no place in the world that does these outpatient besides Duke Spine Institute. Why? Because they're not able to. They don't have the technology. They don't have the technique. But if they watch enough of my surgeries, they can learn how to do it outpatient. Why is outpatient important, Weedy? Because people shouldn't have to go to the hospital after back surgery. The hospital is unfortunately a dangerous place. And nowadays, irrigation, especially bipolar, irrigation bipolar. Because, you know, you, hospitals where all the COVID patients go. And we're having now a resurgence of COVID cases, COVID-19, um, the vi virus cases. There's a resurgence now everywhere in the United States. And Brevard County is having a particularly bad resurgence. They're saying 10 admissions a day for COVID. So if you're having a back surgery like this, you don't want to go to the hospital and catch COVID. That's where people get infections, nosocomial infections. And just look it up. Nosocomial, N-O-S-O-C-O-M-I-A-L. It means hospital-acquired infection. And the reason it's hospital-acquired is because you went to the hospital to have something done unrelated and you got an infection. So by doing these surgeries outpatient, um, you can avoid having nosocomial infections. 
And why is that? Because Duke Spine Institute has a clean facility. We don't have any infected patients here. Okay, so we don't have any bacteria here from other patients to get on each other and spread. So, all right. So, things are looking good. I'm almost done. Sorry, Patel always likes to bang heads with me. All right, um, just kidding, Dr. Patel. So there's the uh, transverse process of L2 right there. So the screw goes right where the transverse process meets. Suck right there, bipolar, nah. Right where the transverse process meets the superior facet, there's a little bump right there called the mammillary process. If you can see it, perfect. That's where your screw goes. And mammillary, of course, means breast. It's like the breast. So it's a little bump. I, I don't name these things, so please don't get angry with me. Um, but that's what it's called. There's a lot of mammillary things in the body. Now this is a, a rotated spine. So of course, one of these transverse processes will be deeper down, and that's this side, the right side. The left side is closer to me. And the reason for that is the rotation of the spine. We call it scoliosis. This patient has scoliosis. Here. All right. That's good. Don't, don't start with any bleeding. Bipolar. All right, so getting back to bleeding. Depending on the bleeding source, you need a different tool. And you're going to watch me use different tools throughout the surgery, depending on the bleeding. This is by the foramen. you got to suck. I can't, you know, work through blood. So um, this is by the foramen, so it's safer to use the bipolar because it keeps the charge between the tips, what are, what are called the tines, T-Y-N-E-S, and it doesn't allow the charge to go get the nerve. How's our waveforms? Good? Okay. But he was to begin with or what? Was to begin with? Yeah. All right, we're ready to go. We're going to do our laminectomy now. I'll start with five, then four, then three, then two. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, so these are the spinous processes and the uh, uh, ligament above. You want to do a grab? This is a special thing called a rongeur. It bites bone. Uh, start at five. Let me see where you are. Five is, nope. That's five. That's the spinous process of five. Yeah. Hard bone, huh? Yeah, we like we like hard bone because it heals well, especially with fusion. And the problem is um, soft bone patients, like uh, people with osteopenia or osteoporosis, their bone doesn't heal as well. So hard bone is good. You can see the bone marrow right there inside those spaces. All right, that, that's sacrum, so you don't need too much of that. You just need the rest of five. Don't get the dura. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. When you bite down here, you gotta be careful not to bite all the way. You kinda bite three quarters and then crack so you don't grab the dura. All right, but all this bone we're harvesting right now from this laminectomy, we're gonna save it, clean it, and we're gonna put it back in the disc space for the fusion. Because we need bone for the fusion. No, no, no. Keep going here, do the next one. I'll do that part. Now, bone, this bone has a outer surface called the cortical bone, which is flat and hard. And then it's got these little channels on the inside called the ploic bone. So bone has two parts, outer surface called lamellar bone, uh, cortical bone, and then an inside called the diploic bone. And you can see it, right guys? Can you see that, John? Right there, all those little cavities and caves. Yes, we can see That's it all. That's where bone marrow is. Bone marrow is inside those caves. Now, the beauty of this is we're taking the patient's own bone marrow, which has stem cells, and we're putting it back in their body. Okay? All right, let me, let me, uh, let me see here. Bovi, you want to be careful with this because to stop bleeding from bone, you can use several things. One of them is bone wax, but I have a feeling this is coming from the diploic bone. And the problem with using bone wax is that bone wax will prevent fusion. 
so you don't want to use bone wax unless you absolutely need to in a fusion case. Now, if you're just doing a laminectomy and not fusing, then it's okay. But if you're going to do a fusion, then we want to preserve this diploic bone, and those spaces are important. So I don't want to get rid of them and fill them up with bone wax because then it won't fuse well. So the best thing to do is to finish, if you're getting a little bit of bleeding like that, that's the inner spinous or ligament and flavum right there. It's all thickened and buckling because of the degenerative condition of the spine after the disc injury. But see this diploic bone? We don't want to fit, fill it up with bone wax. I could do that, but I don't want to. So the best thing to do here is gel foam soaked in thrombin. Come on, come on. Move it quickly. Yeah, this is bleeding. Bleeding, you don't move slow. All right, so gel foam soaked in thrombin. Now thrombin is a procoagulant. Procoagulant is a, is a molecule or chemical molecule, basically a molecule, it's not really a chemical, but a molecule that your body produces, part of the coagulation cascade made in the liver, and it's activated in the bloodstream. And it basically causes um, what's called the clotting cascade, which is a bunch of these proteins that bind together and stop bleeding. So thrombin helps that, all right? So look at how beautiful that stopped the bleeding. We can save that and use it again because it's not filled with blood. Next, we're gonna go to, that was the three, four, five. We're gonna go to number four. Look at all that arthritis and stuff. I'm gonna clean it out. Come on. Now, why do we broadcast all of our surgeries live? Because we want you to see what happens, all right? So it makes, number one, a great educational opportunity for the public to watch. But number two, you get to see if we have any of those oh shit moments you hear about in the movies, right? And the truth is, all right, not all spine surgeons are the same. A lot of them do have the O-S-H-I-T -O moment. I don't know if we have any young kids watching, but they're gonna hear that stuff anyway. I told you, my daughter, when she was when she was like 12 years old, asked me if I knew what a Benoit ball was. Oh, no. I'm like, and you do? Wow. Are you kidding me? I mean, kids these days, I thought it was bad when I was a kid. We always talked about things, but somehow I guess this information is getting out even more these days. All right, we're gonna more, more gel foam and thrombin. Check it out, it's pretty interesting here. So this is the bottom of the lamina of L4. That's the ligament and flavum. But also the lamina is literally sitting on top of the other lamina. There's supposed to be a gap between them, about a centimeter. But this is sitting on top of this because of the hypertrophy, arthritis, the collapse of the disc, collapse of the spine. Literally the spine sh settles down when the discs are injured. So all of this starts with a disc injury and then it leads to deformity and settling of the spine. So everything starts with an injury to the disc called a herniation and it all starts with something called an annular tear. And unfortunately, 99% of doctors don't understand any of this, so you can't get that information from them. They're clueless. <clears throat> huh? They'll tell you we don't know why the spine does degenerative discs. It's just part of aging. It's not part of aging. There are a lot of people who are 80 years old, 90 years old, they have perfectly normal discs and an undegenerated spine. And then I see 15 year old kids with degenerated spine. So you can't tell me it's part of aging. That's a lie. It's just nonsense. It's a lack of appreciation for the disease of what's going on. But we're changing that at Duke Spine Institute. We actually understand what's happening. The primary injury for all degenerative spine conditions is a disc injury and specifically an annular tear, which then leads to a herniation and degeneration of the disc, which then leads to settling. 80% of the weight, 80% gel foam, Carmen, 80% of the body weight goes through the disc. Actually, 85%. And then 15% goes through the facet joint. So imagine if you injure your disc, it's like having a, a nail in your tire of your car, and all that weight of the car is going to push down and force the air out through that little leak. That's exactly what's happening. All the jelly is being forced out through the annular tear. We call that a herniation. 
That's where all the back pain and neck pain come from, the herniation and the annular tear, specifically in the back of the disc. But it causes the spine to settle. I've got a, my cable is trapped again. And it's pulling my head down. All right, you're playing my wedding song now? Yes. See if I do that, there it goes, that's better. So did you give me more slack? Yes. All right. So once again, I'm Dr. Duke Majin, Dr. Patel. I've got my team, I've got Zane here. Oh no, it's caught again. See? Look, okay, you gotta, you gotta fix it. You can't just do fixes every two minutes. See it? Pull the loop out. Don't just do a little loop, it's gonna slide back down. All right, good, thank you. Uh, again, just did it again. You gotta fix it properly. It's not the microphone cable, it's the light cable. That may have pulled us off again. Is that centered? My fingertip? All right. So, um, and we have Luis as well and my team with Crystal and Amy and many of you don't realize it, but there's a lot of people in this operating room. How many people do we have in here? Nine people, plus the patient. So 10 people total, including the patient. All right? So why do we need so many people in an operating room? Well, everyone has a job. Everyone has a very important job, and, I, and they're all necessary. So we've got 10 people warming the room. You can imagine the temperature would get up pretty high with all the equipment. So we actually have to keep the ORs really cool with a lot of air conditioning. And that air has to move through the operating room in a, in a laminar flow from uh, top to bottom, I believe. Top to bottom, right? Rather than the other way around. Well, operating rooms are engineered to um, handle heavy electrical loads, but also engineered in such a way to handle the airflow. And the reason we want laminar flow, uh, unidirectional, top to bottom, is because otherwise you can carry bacteria onto the patient, if there is any bacteria. Which of course there is, move your thing. We all have bacteria on our body, but we don't want to get that bacteria from us onto the patient. And the bacteria we have is just normal flora, normal bacteria that we normally have in our body. All right, that's nice, right? We have a question from a YouTube viewer sure. asking, uh, will a PCO osteotomy be performed? Will a Smith-Peterson? A yes. PCO, yes. yes. Will a posterior vertebral osteotomy be, for, be performed today? Yes. We're going to perform it very soon. Great question. That's a very sophisticated level of understanding. Who was our viewer? Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, but it's... Uh, Is it a physician? Uh, possibly. They don't say. All right. So the question was, am I going to be doing a Smith-Peterson or a posterior vertebral osteotomy? There's different kinds. The Smith-Peterson osteotomy is what we'll be doing today, which is basically cutting through the pars on both sides and removing the abnormal facet joints in order to correct the deformity. You don't keep sucking around. You'll suck the clots off, and then we'll have bleeding. So we're going to cut pars osteotomy, removal of abnormal facets, and then, of course, at the, once we get to the disc, we'll be cutting through the disc and removing the disc as well. So, yes, we're doing a Smith-Peterson osteotomy. Okay. What is bleeding? Irrigation? Let's just see. It, it, it's better, but I want to make sure we get it all here. That's good. So it's just the bone, the diploid bone mostly. All right. I think we're ready. We're ready to go. 
get aggressive here. Not that we haven't been aggressive yet. All right, large bite. So I'm going to start with an L2, finish the laminectomy, and uh, and then I'm going to do my osteotomy. Okay, look, hand me the large bite properly. Okay, how do you do that? Yeah. So flat and that way. Perfect. Suck, please. So the way you you do this is you got to get with one lip, the bottom lip underneath the lamina, right where the ligaments popping out. And you go side to side. So I went on Dr. Patel's side, and then I move my body, and I go the other way. And I go back to Patel side, and I go that way. And this is all good bone. We're going to save it and use it. And then I come back again, okay? And you're left with a little nub in the middle, which you bite down as well. And then I'm going to go Patel side again. And I'm actually making little progress at this point. So this tool is no longer useful. Now is where I bring my drill in. Not many spine surgeons know how to use a drill this close to the nerves, okay? And it takes a lot of training and practice. So unfortunately, a lot of the surgeons aren't comfortable. What the is going on with the pedal? They're not comfortable using it. This is a special spine drill. It has a three millimeter neuro tip. You have to stabilize your hand, otherwise you can have really bad things happen. And I'm going to drill away this diploic bone and the cortical bone. And Dr. Patel knows to keep the sucker out of my way. And I'm aiming here to do an osteotomy. So there's my pars. I'm going to come across the pars just above the inferior facet. You don't want to come across the pars up here. That's the top half of the frame and you'll get the nerve. You want to be in the bottom half of the frame. Irrigate. Suck. Okay, good. Move. That's ligamentum flavum. Just under the bone, you have ligamentum flavum in the bottom half of the lamina. When you get to the top half of the lamina, you're going to have dura. You got to be more careful. So now we're going to start seeing dura. Suck. Irrigate. Okay, there's a little bit of fat just under the bone. Okay, now I want a kerosene two. Okay. So I've got enough space at the bottom part of the lamina here. I can get a two millimeter kerosene just above the dura and I'm gonna bite sideways towards the foramen and lateral recess. Okay. Okay. okay, I thin the bone with the drill. Thin the bone, very important. Otherwise, this is gonna be a very difficult thing to do. Three. Because if the bone's really thick right there, which happens quite a bit in arthritis of the spine, you're gonna you're gonna end up just not being able to bite it because it's so hard. There's a little bit of fat there, and it's atrophic. You can see it; it's atrophied fat, not normal fat. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my woody. Thank you, Luis. Luis remembers. My woody goes out the foramen, and now I can drill over the woody to finish my osteotomy because the woody is pushing my dura away and my nerve roots away from the drill. Of course you have to feel where the drill bit is. Now that feels pretty good there. I got a little bit of cortical bone still there. All right, cracker. Nice job, Zane. Now I get my cracker in here and I just crack and now I've disarticulated the inferior facet of L2. It's still stuck a little bit through scar tissue from inflammation and capsule. Not a very big facet. We got some hypertrophy ligament here, which we'll deal with later. Take it, take that, okay? And then I can go do the other side as well. And I'm pushing the dura away. Got to be careful at L2, because the spinal cord ends just above here at L1. And you don't want to be mashing on the spinal cord or conus. So you cannot put really any pressure on the dura up here. Okay? How's the view? How's the view? It's good. We can see it clearly. The, the tip of this uh, drill is in center? Uh, yes. So anyone who thinks that I'm just an endoscopic surgeon will see, if you go back and look at my surgeries, I can do any kind of spine surgery, the most complex. 
and do it quite well. There's a bone spur right there on the facet growing over from this superior facet over and trapping the inferior facet. This is why you cannot derotate the spine. You can't fix the rotation without removing these abnormal facets because this is blocking. This is like a, a metal plate right there. It's literally blocking large by the derotation of the spine, the correction of deformity. So this has to be removed. The facet has to be removed. That's totally abnormal growth, by the way. Shouldn't be there. And now you can mobilize the facet. So you see why it's so hard to fix deformity unless you take the pedi unless you take the facets out. That's why I always take the facets out. Come on, have it ready. Otherwise, these get really long surgeries. So we got to have our stuff ready to go. This is all thickened ligament. Look at that ligamentum flavor and how thick it is. It's very abnormal. Okay, just underneath it is dura. I need a woody and a kerosene. Five. Come on, you can't do that to me. That's just a, a beginner move. Here you go, here you go. Wipe. Don't get in my flight path. So, we're just finishing up our osteotomy. Careful with the dura. Like I said, the spinal cord is just north. There's a little bit of fat there, pretty atrophic. Why does fat get atrophied in the spinal canal? Anybody know? To tell you know? Two things. Compression is one, but not in this case. Inflammation. Yeah, chronic inflammation is gonna just destroy the fat and make it look terrible like this stuff does. But you gotta watch out for adhesions. You can actually get scar tissue adhesions from the chronic inflammation between the dura and the surrounding lamina, in which case, this is the best tool in the world, by the way, the Woodson. Any spine surgeon that wants to do complex spine surgery, highly recommend. All right, now I'm in the lateral recess over here. I'm just under the facet. Why does there get to be a problem here? There's narrowing here, and the nerve root runs right through here and out the next foramen. So it gets narrow because look at the hypertrophied facet and the facet capsule. I need a smaller kerosene. Four. Four. You like our kerosens? They're blue for Duke's spine. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Right above the nerve root. Huh? Good. Who? Monica. Oh, Monica, you want to step out? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't see why not. I don't think we need you for a little while. We've already localized. All right. Why am I having such a hard time getting this right here? This is pinching the uh, traversing root. Interesting. It's like sliding around. There we go. So, this is important, okay? Most spine surgeons don't understand stenosis at all, believe it or not. And most neurosurgeons don't understand stenosis, trust me. They think they do. The most common location that's symptomatic stenosis is here in the foramen or here in the lateral recess, medial to the pedicle. Never do I ever see central stenosis as like the presenting presenting uh, pathology. Why? Because by the time you get central stenosis, it's so advanced. All right, what do we got here? Let's see a uh, bovi. Yeah, 
What other questions do we have? Again, stay on the bone. This is all arthritis stuff here. And that's the thing, that's all that's left here. Suck, suck, suck. Um, this question is a little delayed. But one of our viewers was wondering what your wedding song is that was playing. Oh, what my wedding song is. It was uh, Aerosmith. Don't let the what? Too many people, one at a time. Don't want to miss a thing, that's right. Thank God for my staff. It's Aerosmith, don't want to, don't want to miss a thing. It's the theme song from Armageddon, that's it. Yeah, sorry. I had to choose a song that was contemporary and my wife and I both chose it together. So that's the good news. Huh? It's just, and you know, of course, he's a famous singer and it's Aerosmith for God's sakes. And it was a good song. Very romantic song, Carison Four. Yeah, it's a good song, good movie. I think I've watched it like 10 times. Yeah. No, I don't want to. I can't see, Pato. I cannot see. I've been married uh, since 2002. Come on. Yeah. So, since 2002. All right. I'm going out the foramen here, and I feel it feels really good. I don't feel any pressure on the nerve. I've gotten rid of all the bony compression. And by the way, um, scoliosis can cause nerve compression, right, Jotham? And the way it does it is it twists the facet and the facet capsule and the pedicles and everything which make up the foramen where the nerve exits. It twists it and it can actually cause the nerve to be pinched. All right, back to my side. K5. So once again, I'm using a Kerosene number five. It's a, and a Woody. This is a Woodson. This is a Woodson here. And the combination is, in my opinion, the best. There's more room here in the lateral recess because of the rotation of the spine. So I don't have the same degree of narrowing here because this side of the spine is rotated up towards me away from the nerves. The other side is rotated forward towards the nerves, if that makes sense. So this has got, it's got more space. Right here. And by the way, if you watch a hundred of these surgeries that I do, which are all on YouTube, you can actually see that I approach it the same way every time. That foramen's open. And this lateral recess is now decompressed. Here, I can actually, you see the facet of L3. Um, I can feel the pedicle right here of L3. And what's wrapping around is the L3 nerve root. Shelf them as it's about to go out the L3-4 foramen below. Now we're listening to Scorpions, Winds of Change. Great song. This is gel foam soaked in thrombin. Basically it's a hemostatic agent and the gel foam itself is like, I think uh, it's also hemostatic because it puts pressure. Just gentle sucking. Let's see if there's any bleeding. I don't think there is. All right, let's go to the next level. I'm gonna get rid of the gel foam first. Take. Large bite. You guys ready? Take, 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 or give it to me. Take this. All right, so start underneath the lamina once again. And with this collapsing of the spine from the disc being herniated and degenerated, you literally get one lamina sitting on top of the other. It's not normal. There's the ligamentum flavum right there. See it? Now one of my assistants is, is actually taking the tissues out of the, uh, 
Let me have a drill. Out of my tool, they're handing me my instruments and stuff. The other one is cleaning the bone. Yeah. All right, so our goal is to cut across this pars right above the facet. Let me see. So I'm gonna obliterate this diploic space. And I'm gonna come across my pars just above the facet. Mm, let me have a, let me have gel foam thrown in. You guys gotta keep those, those strings proper, okay? You know what that means? Put pressure here. Put pressure here. Yes, stay there. And off. So I'm actually shoving the thrombin and gel foam into that little hole, the diploic channel off. And by doing so, we can stop the bleeding. Take, 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 take. Okay. So I'm on the, the patient's left side here and I'm doing my Smith-Peterson osteotomy at L3 now because I've already done L2. Once again, you want to cut through the whole thing. Avoid the nerve, which is above me, to my left. Once you get through enough of the bone, you can actually pretty much crack the remaining laminar bone, or you know, lam lamellated bone, uh, right there. We call it, we call this the cracker. It's not a cracker. It's really a cob retractor, but mallet. So now I'm gonna remove this facet because it's stuck down. There we go. Large. All right, what other questions does our audience have for me? This is the left inferior facet of L3. Anything? No further questions at this time. Okay, Woody, Harrison 4, or, yeah. So now I'm, I can see the ligament I'm flavum. Yellow ligament. I'm gonna work on this other side here. Let me have a five. I'm pushing the nerve roots away, forward. Pretty good. A lot of doctors don't know how much they can push. Well, you can see how much you can push. As long as you don't grab them. There's a bunch of arthritis right there. You see that? Just hitting on the dura and the nerves. It's all thickened ligament and capsule. Got to get rid of it. Otherwise, it'll just sit there and hit the nerves. All right, let's go through the foramen. Remember, this is the side rotated away from us, so trying to get out the foramen, and it's pretty damn tight. It's interesting. Okay, I can't really do it. I don't want to damage the nerve down there, so I'm just going to make my osteotomy of, without doing that. Here, I need to work here. Okay, So put one sucker here, not that one, the other one. Thank you, and now the other sucker will work with me. Not too much irrigation. Okay, just a little blast. A lot less. Yeah. Just enough to wet my whistle. Okay, done. Cracker. Alright, so... You gotta be careful when you do this. You don't want to fracture the pedicle above. So you gotta really be careful. Mallet. And not that this patient has osteoporosis, but in somebody with osteoporosis, you gotta be careful how much leverage you use on that pedicle above. So I've actually fractured it one time in an osteoporotic patient. I learned my lesson not to do too much. Oh, what was that? Huh? Please don't do that. We're operating on someone's spine and I don't need loud noises except for the rock and roll music I listen to, which is predictable. No. Huh? All right. Look at how stuck that was. You're telling me that you can move those facets without doing this osteotomy? No. They're just so scarred down. How are you going to correct the scoliosis 
without removing them. I can't see. And so I'm moving the dirt over. I got a kerosene five. I'm gonna look at all that thickened ligament down there. See it? Careful on the dura. Why does the sucker have to be careful on the dura? Huh? You can tear it. How does a sucker tear it? No. No. What happens to suckers when they work around drills? Large bite. They get they get spiky, sharp pieces of metal. And now you're sucking on the dura and moving the sucker with a sharp, spiky mouth. What's going to happen? It's going to rip through the dura. Okay. Now, if you have a perfectly smooth face, orifice, then you're fine. But it's like someone using their teeth on you. What's up here? Ir irrigation. Like kissing a girl and she bites your tongue with her teeth. You don't want that. Or boy or whatever it is. Not to be discriminatory. These days you have to be careful. Okay. Let's have a bipolar. It looks like there's a little vein right there just ready to burst open like Mount Vesuvius. Yeah. And by taking a preemptive action, I can prevent some bleeding later on. It's a good sized vein. It's in just the right place. Okay, doing good. Let's get some more gel foam thrown in here. So we're almost, you know, halfway done with our decompression and osteotomy. Come on, come on. Tuck here. Done. What other questions can I field from our audience today? This is again a live stream. Ugh. Take your finger off the hole. This is a live stream. Tuck here. Uh, surgery, we are not editing it. We don't edit any of our surgeries for content. We just stream. And we give the audience a chance to ask questions during the surgery so they can interact with us. This is all thickened ligament, very edematous, inflamed, thickened ligament and flavum. One of our viewers is wondering, why would someone do a fusion over a minimally invasive laser surgery such as the Duke laser disc repair? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. Um, I could have cured this patient's back pain and leg symptoms with a Duke laser disc repair. However, this patient wanted their scoliosis corrected. And I cannot do that with a Duke laser disc repair. And that was very important to this patient. So. Ultimately, patients rule, they choose what they want. I don't tell them what to do. I give them my recommendations. I give them options, and I let them choose, Kerosene 3. So this patient, fixing the twisting of the spine was important to him. And watch it. And I'm, I'm not gonna argue with people, you know? If that's what they want, then that's what they want. I'm here to serve their needs, not my own, so. My philosophy is if you've explained everything and made sure they understand and they understand one way is better than another and they still want to do it the other way, fine. Their choice, you know. As long as I'm capable of providing them that, I'll do it. And as long as it's reasonable, of course. This is not an unreasonable surgery. Matter of fact, this is the standard, more common standard. All right, I need a bovi. Watch it. I gotta peel this off a little more and I'm gonna take that facet out. Large bite. Large bite. Large bite. So this is a facet. All right, drill. Take this. Show me. You ready? I wanna come across here, so don't, yeah. Let me have a kerosene four. Too much irrigation, Zane. No, no, Sorry, okay. Luis. Too much irrigation. Okay. So 
So there's your answer, folks. I don't know what else to tell you. This is what the patient wanted. Come on, come on, one wipe. You don't get five wipes, okay? okay. Right. This is not a resort. We're not parking here for the day. Let me have a pituitary. Move your sucker, please. This is literally the tip of the uh, superarticular process sitting in the foramen. And uh, it's just not coming. I need a, is there not a more robust? I want a heavy. Come on. Yeah, you guys are supposed to give me the heavy unless I ask for the light. Let me see the bobby. Just... In case you're wondering how much force I apply. There we go. Let me see the sucker. Let me see... Uh, is that just a bunch of scar tissue in the frame? Let me have a woody. Scar tissue in the frame and I can live with. Yeah, that's perfect. It's open. All right, cell phone. Please don't move it around. Just land it and leave it. Otherwise, I'm playing whack-a-mole. Suck, suck. Right there. On the, on, how, no, on the cotton. The whole purpose of the cotton is so you don't suck the gel foam. Stop. Stop. Now. Right there. Perfect. Where are we bleeding from? All right, come off. Get ready. Some more gel foam and on there. Great song, by the way. I need a Woody. Take. Nice. That's good. Stop. Let me have a pickup. Cotton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yep, thank you. You see that? Now, this bleeding we're controlling right now is vein, mostly vein. Vein bleeding is best controlled with uh, gel foam and thrombin. Suck, 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 suck. Let's look over here. What do we got? You got this, Woody? Kerosene 5. So why do I use the Woody first? Because you can't just stick it there. You have to put it in my hand, Zane. A lot of this inflammation will scar this ligament down to the dura. And if I bite the ligament, come on, come on, come on. What are you doing, Zane? Are you, are you okay? Yes, sir. I, I thought I was going to put it in your right hand. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> are, you, are you responding to internal stimulation? I love that. <laughs> responding to internal stimulation. <laughs> Uh, it just means you're focused on something else. We're just giving you a, a little jolt, okay? That's fine. I appreciate your work. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Trust me, I, I bang on everybody. Except for Dr. Patel, because he's perfect. Garrison 3. I said I don't give you a hard time because you're perfect. You're like, yeah, right. I bang on myself. I don't know if you know that. Sometimes you'll hear me cussing a, in tongues. That's me cussing at myself for doing something stupid. All right, I am going to decapitate this. Needs to be done. Yeah, pretty interesting. Because the curve is towards me like this, the spine is like literally bent towards me. What do you mean? Okay, no, nothing. Like this is the, supposed to be a straight spine. This spine is curved like that. That's exaggeration, but you can actually see the facets on that side are more open to each other, and here they're literally almost sitting on top of each other. All right, I'm gonna need a... I need a uh, cob.
What a beautiful song. I ended up not needing the cob. The cob is to pull the tissue aside. So I'm removing this superior facet. And of course, there's always the risk of getting a little bit of bleeding here lateral. So be prepared. Just go into where it's a lot of soft tissue here. Soft tissue usually has blood vessels. Large bite. I'm going to get this stump out. By the way, this is where we're going to watch it. I'm going to, I'm going to do not touch it there. Okay. If you put your hand here and I release it, it will literally rip your finger off. So do not ever put your hand there. Okay. okay. It's a safety issue for you. All right. So perfect. That's perfect. Now I just want to finish the amputation of that superior facet, the tip that's digging up into the foramen. God, it's so tight here. Unlike the last one, this is pretty damn tight. I can't even fit this one millimeter thing in. So I'm gonna just amputate. This is part of the Smith-Peterson osteotomy, cutting off the tip of the um, superior facet. If you go too low, you'll get into the pedicle. You don't wanna do that. So you wanna go just above the pedicle, which is over the inferior half of the foramen. Now we're listening to the scorpions. You're wondering what we're listening to? Got a little bleeder again lateral, which we'll get to in a moment. Let me in. Let me have the kerosene three. So I got to get this tip out of the foramen. It's literally from this disease of scoliosis, literally sitting on the nerve exiting. I may need a bigger one. Bigger? Bigger? Son of a gun, large bite. Once I get this piece of bone out, this is literally crushing the nerve. All right, now I can get the, this thickened ligament off. This, up, up, up. Let me get right here. And my next move is right here, right above the nerve as it starts to exit. And all this stuff is schmutz in the frame and it's just thickened capsule and ligament. And it's literally pushing on the nerve right here. The nerve is just right here underneath this. I don't want to grab the nerve accidentally. So it's now the nerve is unpinched. Gel foam. Yeah, I'm going to put gel foam in there. Gel foam and thrombin. Thank you. Things that killed our love. So again, it's the same thing as you just work your way down one level to the next and you're treating stenosis you're treating the deformity you're treating the pain from the bad disc from the facets suck yeah irrigation off we're halfway done with our osteotomies and our decompression and after this we're going to do uh, our discectomies and inner body fusions and then our posterior instrumentation and posterior fusion so we got a few more steps to go still. How many of these surgeries have I done in my career? 26 years. About, about a thousand of this exact type of surgery. Not this many levels, but obviously the number of levels changes depending on the needs of the patients. But I would say on average two and a half levels per patient. That's based on a paper I published years ago on this type of surgery peer-reviewed and published in the National Library of Medicine. I think our average was two and a half, 2.4 levels per patient that were symptomatic and treated and successful with 95% elimination of their leg symptoms and I want to say 85% average elimination of their back pain. Okay, Jopo. And honestly, I think that 85 was higher. It's just they had other types of back pain like they had pain from all the muscles being moved over. So I took the original back pain and traded it out for muscle pain. Um, whatever happened to the scorpion? No. Right. Whenever you're ready, we have a couple more questions. Yeah, I'll take the questions.
One Facebook viewer is wondering, do you use nerve monitors during your surgeries? Yeah, we use nerve monitoring during surgery. As a matter of fact, our nerve monitor is right over there. Say hi. Hey. And what are you monitoring today? So he's running SSEPs, which are somatosensory evoked potential, and then he's running EMG uh, to look at the muscles, make sure I'm not hitting the nerves and causing muscle spikes. And then um, he has motor evoked potentials available where he'd stimulate the brain and cause muscles to contract. And then he's also got, what else do you have? A channel EEG, so electroencephalogram. All right, suck here. So yes, we're doing the most sophisticated nerve monitoring you can do. We do that for all of our fusions like this. Um, we've had to actually reposition a couple of screws in the past because we did the stimulating the screw and we found that it activated the uh, mu motor, the muscle. And so we below uh, uh, 10 milliamps. Yeah, I'll take that uh, drill, I think. This is one lamina just sitting on top of the other. There's no inner laminar gap. I mean, it's just so collapsed. It's not normal. Yeah, so we do extensive intraoperative monitoring. As a matter of fact, we don't even get paid for it. The insurance companies don't pay us. They deny it. They keep saying, no, we're not paying. But we do it anyway because it's best for the patient. It costs us money, but we do it because it's the right thing to do for people and make sure you have the best outcome. So we don't do monitoring for everything. We do it for all spinal fusions. Um, you know, posterior cervical fusions, anterior cervical fusions, posterior lumbar fusions. And they do a great job. We have a great partnership with them. So, all right. Uh, and we have a neurologist, right? Monitoring. Where is he located? Lakeland, Tampa. So we have a neurologist monitoring it real time constant and we pipe it out to the OR. I think he even is watching the surgery maybe. Oh wow, good, good. Well, there you have it. We have more than 10 people helping or nine people helping this patient here. We have a neurologist as well who's actually not physically in the OR but virtually connected in real time and monitoring the nerves. So this is left L4 <clears throat> facet. Again, scar down, but impossible to fix scoliosis without removing. Okay, impossible to fix it properly. You want to get the maximum improvement of scoliosis corrective surgery for your spine, you need to have osteotomies done. Especially if it's, uh, I mean, maybe for idiopathic, Childhood, you don't need it, but for adult degenerative scoliosis, you need osteotomies. There's no way to, to overcome all of this resistance that's built into the degeneration without osteotomies. I've been doing them now for 26 years. All right, we got a bridge here. Let me have a large bite. I got to try to get in because there's all this scar tissue right here from the inflammation from the arthritis. just like a wall of scar tissue. Why is there so much scar tissue? Well, chronic inflammation. Degenerative disc disease, degenerative facet disease is an inflammatory condition. It's an inflammatory disease. It's, the basis of it is inflammation of the joint. And whenever you have joint inflammation, it actually ruins, large bite, ruins everything around the arthritic joint. It's like a, it's like a nuclear waste site, just leaking radioactive material into the surrounding groundwater and, and land. I've got this thing pinching me again. I don't know, but maybe you need to figure out a better way to fix it. I mean, a, a piece of tape would hold it relative to the clip so you don't have this problem. Any questions?
Yes, another Facebook viewer states that they have severe stenosis and is wondering, is there anything that comes after severe or is that the worst that there is? Is there anything what? Anything worse than severe in yes. severity. There's, what is the, what is the line from um, Spaceballs? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh. Ludicrous. Ludicrous, that's right. There's ludicrous stenosis. No, of course there's not anything that comes after severe. Sorry, I don't mean to, you know, be a mean, but we're just trying to have fun here as well. Um, Bobby, do not grab the large bite there. Um, I would say ludicrous stenosis, but it's severe as, as severe as it gets. So there's mild, moderate, and severe. But here's the, here's the God's, God's honest truth, okay? There's no such thing as mild, moderate, and severe. There's no textbook uh, physical, you know, stenosis is a physical finding. It's a structural finding. There is no textbook like, you know, two millimeters is mild, four millimeters is moderate, six millimeters is severe. It's just literally radiologist to radiologist, okay? It would be no different than opening up a Sports Illustrated magazine and saying, hey, she's cute or she's not cute, you know what I mean? It's really very subjective. Um, but for me, it doesn't matter what they say, okay? What matters is what the patient says. So if the patient is having symptoms from their stenosis, they need treatment. It has nothing to do with mild, moderate, or severe. It has to do with you. Are you having leg symptoms, yes or no? Or if it's in your neck, arm symptoms, spinal cord dysfunction. Yes. But don't pay attention to those words. They're just useless adjectives. But to answer your question, no, there's nothing worse than severe in the biz. And it's a very good question, by the way. But uh, I, only, I only talk about ludicrous stenosis because I like space balls. And I need something to break up the uh, seriousness of this surgery. So I'm using humor. But to address your question, severe is usually the last adjective that they use when it's really bad. All right, so I need to get in here. There's so much scar tissue there. Let me have a Woody again, and let me have a Kerosene 3. What? Son? son? No, your son. Call, uh, answer. You can answer him. Ask him what's up. Ask him what he needs. Is it? Tell him to hop onto YouTube, and he can ask a question. I'm, ki I'm kidding. Uh, he wants to ask me a question? Just, okay, fine. All right, here you go. I need a bigger kerosene, like a four or five. So I'm making progress. I'm just biting this lamina away. You can see there's some deployed bone there. Okay. You okay, doctor? Do I need to give you a respiratory treatment? Huh? So just so you all know about COVID, their cases are on the rise. I don't know why I just thought about that. Well, I do know why, but I won't say. <laughs> um, Kerosene 3. The cases are on the rise everywhere and pretty much everywhere. And I can tell you this, I've heard many people who have had the vaccine are getting COVID, okay? And they're going to the hospital, it's bad. And I think they're they're not talking about that because they don't want to they don't want people to stop getting vaccinated. They want to keep selling those vaccines. Now I'm going to of course take flack for this because there's always people who will disagree with me, and that's fine. But I'm telling you right now what I'm hearing and seeing from people that I trust, patients included, that um, they they're getting the J and J or the Moderna or any of these vaccines and they're still contracting COVID afterwards. And it's bad, they can get it really bad. True, like same as pre-vaccine symptoms like respiratory failure, loss of taste, um, dehydration, suck please. So just because you took the vaccine doesn't mean you won't get the COVID. So be on high alert, you know? If you know somebody who's had the vaccine and they're sick, be careful. They could have 
they could have another case or could have a case of COVID. Don't assume it's not. Mm. Wow. Great song. Want to bring it up? Any other questions from our audience? No, none at this time. Perfect. So look at this um, ligamentum flavum, totally scarred, Dr. Patel. You see that? That is not a normal ligament. You've seen normal ligaments. That is ratty. Ratatouille. And look at that fat right there. It's just totally like broken down and uh, dissolved halfway. And Why is there fat in the... Uh, why is there fat here? Anybody know? Oh, why is there fat? <laughs> yeah, energy source, right? And what's it feeding? Inflammation. What's inflamed? The facet joints. Massive facet joint inflammation. So the whole purpose of fat being here, your body puts it here as, an, as like a drop shipment. To your spine to feed the inflammation. Drill. <laughs> He's right, but let me get the cob first, real quick. I just want to pull this soft tissue off here. All right. So we are uh, almost done. We got another 30 minutes with this decompression stuff and the uh, osteotomies, and then we're going to move on to. Um, our inner body fusion, inner body cage for reconstructing the spine. It's a very comp. This is the most complex type of surgery, you know, from a degenerative um, standpoint that we do. And there isn't much more complicated. There is some stuff like transthoracic and corpectomies and reconstructions like that, but we don't do that stuff here. There's really no reason for it. Not in our setting, maybe in a trauma setting, yes, but not in our setting. So this is about as big as it gets for us. What is that, a two or three? Looks like a two, I need a three. So I'm just taking this, again, the tip of this facet off, going out the uh, bottom part of the foramen called Cambin's Triangle. Dr. Patel knows all about that. And now I can hopefully pull this tip out. And I want you to look at this. Study it for a moment. And I'm going to explain it to you. You have a large device. Oh, came off. Perfect. So what's happening? Let me have a holder of some type. Actually, let me have the kerosene back. It's probably the best thing. So let's look at this. Okay, there's a very sharp edge here full of bone spur. What's happening is the nerve root. Let me have the pointer or the woody. Let me have the woody. The nerve root, literally, that goes down your leg, comes out here, it goes right here and under that ligament, and it goes out and down your leg. This thing is literally crushing the root every time you extend. That's why people bend over at the grocery store and lean forward on their shopping cart, because they're opening this hole up, okay? And when they extend backwards or stand up straight, this crushes down on the nerve right in there. Pretty cool. We call it neurogenic claudication, where the nerve gets crushed when you extend your back. Anyway, there's the nerve, and it's now decompressed. Let me feel. Let me feel. Feels good. Gel foam. There's nothing pinching it anymore from the back or top. So we got one more level to go, L5S1, and we will be done with our decompression and osteotomy. Actually, I have my side to do as well. I was a little worried about doing this surgery because I haven't done one of these in a while. Everybody wants laser surgery now, which I don't blame them. Oh, oh, should I tell them? We just got word this morning another Blue Cross Blue Shield covered the laser surgery. So we're getting more and more. We're starting to uh, really make a difference with the insurance company. I think they like it too because they're not paying for these expensive fusions.
Look at me, I'm flavor. Is that somebody talking to me? No, sir. Or are those just the voices in my head? <laughs> Responding to internal oh, stimulation. Internal stimulation. Yeah. Over here. Zane and I are, <laughs> are having a delusional day. Anybody know the difference between a hallucination and a delusion? It's an important distinction. What is? A hallucination versus a delusion. All right, I can't hear you. What did you say? Let me hear that answer. Hey, you hit the nail on the head. A hallucination, you see something or hear something or feel something that doesn't exist. There's no stimu stimulus on your body. So it's completely created in your mind. Whereas a delusion is a misinterpretation of a, of a stimulus that does exist. Like somebody hits a hammer and you hear a gunshot that would be a delusion. Oh. All right. So these surgeries typically take about an hour per level. And we are, I don't know where we are, Cobb, Bovey. I don't know where we are time-wise, probably two hours in. And two hours and 15 minutes since incision. So we're about halfway done, maybe a little more. About halfway. All right. Large bite. So we literally have one more level when we're done. Then we can do the inner body cages and then the screws and rods. Believe it or not, the screws and rods are not hard to do. Once you do all this other stuff and you get it done right, the screws and rods are pretty easy. So easy that even, even, uh, Steven, our janitor, does them sometimes. I'm just kidding. Not that easy. But we do have the Papa John pizza guy once in a while do them. All right. Let's have a kerosene pour. So you notice I do the same thing every level. I basically osteotomize the tip of this superior articular process that makes up the bottom of the foramen because it literally digs up into the nerve root, normally bipolar. So I see a little bleeder and do not use the bovi. See the white thing? That's the disc. All right, do not use the bovi here in the foramen. Never, never, never. Always use a bipolar or gel foam. But that was an artery, so I have to use the bipolar. Gel foam is not your best option when it comes to arterial bleeding. It's too high pressure. It'll pop the gel foam off. Coagulation is your best option. Okay. I talk about hemostasis and blood bleeding control because it's actually a very important thing that's ignored by so many people. Piece of thickened ligament right there. Beautiful. Done. All right. The only thing I, yeah, that looks good. Gel foam. So I was, I was concerned about this case because I haven't done one in a while, but that's not really the reason. It's more that I was t concerned I would be tired. Right? Out of shape. Out of shape. That's what happens if you don't use it, you lose it. Let me have this. And, uh, and honestly, I feel pretty good. Not that I want more of these cases, but I'm sure my neck will hurt tomorrow because uh, of all the looking down and having this camera on my head. Yeah. Patel, how you feeling, buddy? Clean it, clean, clean, clean. Come on, pay attention. All right, so how you feeling? Good? All right, here we go. Last one, L5. 
Here's a little more gap here, so it's a little easier to get into underneath the lamina of five. But notice how I always start at the bottom of the lamina for the laminectomy level. And remember, there's always, the reason I started at the bottom is just, I'm a right-handed surgeon standing on the side of the patient, makes sense. But there's also a ligament right here called the ligamentum flavum that's protecting me from biting the dura, which is sitting right below it until I get to the top half. There's the end right there. You all see that? That's pretty cool. So, huh? You see it? Suck it. Literally right there is a transition from the yellow ligament to the dura. Harrison three. Yeah. We lost the sucker. We need a new one, please help. Doesn't matter. It was uh, what do you call it? Whew. It was exercised out of his hand. Let me have a kerosene for. Hmm. All right. So you're right, Patel. It's all scarred here, you see that? I can't even get in. You have to be careful at 5-1 because the dura turns up towards the tailbone, towards the, towards the, you know, us. Rising up through the air. All right, kerosene five. See, I'm pushing the dura down. Doesn't hurt anything when you do that. Don't any more questions? Large bite. Any questions, John? Uh, no, not at this time. I'll let you know if we have any, though. And I will just keep working. Garrison five. Question just came up if you were wanting to answer it. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer your question. For a typical fusion, how many levels are usually involved, or what are the most, like, how, what is the most number of levels that can be fused at once? Most well, levels. Well, the most number of levels fused, we're doing um, five bones number two, number three, number four, number five, and S1, the sacrum right down here. So that's four discs, five bones. Um, I can't really see anything. Let's get the sucker working. Help Dr. Patel. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm thinking about getting rid of my lead. Just let me, give me a minute. I wanna just check it out. So the we're doing five bones, four discs. No, 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 you guys work on this stuff first. I'm fine. You can fuse as many number of vertebrae as you want to. I mean, there's no limit. Um, you can do the whole thoracic spine, the whole lumbar spine. But what's typically needed for degenerative conditions like this is two, two levels, maybe three. This is an unusual case where there's four levels or four discs. So um, five vertebrae. Four discs. No. No. Oh, guys. Then there's a problem with the suction canister, guys. Irrigation. 
I need irrigation. Proceed or should we wait? Woody, Harrison, five. I don't know if I answered the question all the way, John, but you could do one level, you could do, you know, 10, 20 levels, but I've never had to do 20 levels. I've, the most I've done is five. And the, the only time you really need to do more than that is if you're doing cancer surgery or you're doing, uh, you know, deformities of, in kids. In which case, sometimes you have to do more. This is our last level we're doing. I feel the L5 pedicle here. Drill. Okay, guys, it's real simple. Um, do you do you see this line? But that may be the wrong line. Here, let me have irrigation. Settle down, settle down. Here, I'm moving it now. I'm moving it now. Do you see it? There's no suction. It's too light. There's no suction. It must be at the canister level. Let me have another. It may be a defective canister if it's a new canister. No, move your hand. Okay, wait, guys, stop. Stop for a second, stop. Take the sucking tube, the one that's working, and move it to the questionable canister now. Okay, take the sucking tube that Patel's using now and move it to the, to the questionable canister. No, it's not going. You're not understanding. Okay. Let me see. Let me see it. I can't see. Okay. Okay. Drop. Drop that curtain. You cannot see what you're doing over there. Okay. No. You. You have to move the curtain that way so I can see what you're doing. Now, where? I don't care. Where is Patel's line? Okay, take it off. Take it off then. If that's Patel's line, take it off. Okay. All right, so that canister works, right? Now move the other one onto that canister. The other line. Um, this one right here. We have both of here. Not over there. Both are right here. That's what I'm saying. I just give you one. That's what I'm saying. That's That's your problem. That's what I'm saying. Be careful with your Yeah. It's on the floor. No, the old one goes to the foot. Yeah, the other one is at the foot. Stay there, please, and connect that one. Will you hand her, please, that tube? Should be two in there. Yes, that tube. Yes, And connect it to the suction, please. So what one's going to the foot? Don't worry about that. That's the old That's one that I he dropped. dropped. Yeah. Now it's working. Now it's working. Okay? All right. So you got to see the kind of stuff that happens in the operating room. We do have to solve problems from time to time. Hmm. All right. Let's have a drill. You got to reconnect Patel's other one. You need two canisters up there, and you need two tubes to so two canisters. Is both working? The other suction that used to work is not working anymore. No. We wanted another canister at the head. Go foam. It's working now. Now it's working. Both are working? Yeah. Why are they so skinny? Uh, I guess that's skinny, that's fatter. It's a seven and a nine. Uh, 
Thank you, Luis. All right. Good work. We got it figured out. Okay. All right. Here. Suck here. Suck here. All right. Almost done with this. Let's get a drill. A drill, drill, drill. All right. We're going to do another osteotomy here. We're okay, guys. It was just a little misunderstanding. That's all. We figured it out. We're good. I think I need to drill heart deeper. Okay. So this will be our last osteotomy on this side. And then we'll have one more. By the way, in case you're wondering, I'm actually drilling right over the disc. Sometimes you need to go here and crack it. Wow, that thing is... No, 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 it's still too um, attached. Like I was to my high school girlfriend. So I'm feeling around. It feels like most of it's medial right there. Yeah, baby. We call that let it rip. Right, Dr. Patel? All right, was there another question, John? Now that we're back. Uh, yes, time. we have a couple. Oh my gosh. Um, the first question is, how long might it be until other issues of back pain might arise proximal to the surgical area? Never. Not when I do surgery. I don't get adjacent segment disease because I treat all the levels that need to be treated in one surgery. My adjacent segment disease rate is literally, after 1,000 of these surgeries, is quite literally 1%, 1 in 100, end up needing another surgery adjacent to their original surgery. So most adjacent segment disease rates for this kind of surgery are about 25 to 50 percent <clears throat> but because I do all of the levels that need to be done with one surgery it takes a lot longer it's more painful for me and the patient and the staff I need a five and a woody uh, we just suck it up thanks we just suck it up and get it done right Patel we just get it all done in one surgery so people don't have to come back. Other surgeons could too, but they choose not to because it's hard. It's hard to sit here for hours and do the surgery. It's physically and mentally taxing. Many of them don't have the help they need. The hospital supplies them with help, but maybe unqualified or maybe uh, incompetent and unexperienced. So I, I've been in that situation. That's why I built the surgery center here because I was, tired of my patients paying the price for the hospital not providing us with the right support and equipment that we needed to do these surgeries the very best possible way so your question is how long till they get adjacent segment problems they shouldn't get in them you know only one in a hundred of my patients will get them and that's that's basically ten in a thousand I can't even remember the last patient that had adjacent segment disease that I treated. But that's because I don't do a lot of fusions anymore, probably too. So You can avoid adjacent segment disease if your surgeon does your surgery properly. I would say at least 95% of the time. But you have to do the first surgery properly. And that's hard to do for a lot of reasons. This is the lateral recess. I can't get anything in there. Let's go with the Kerosene 3. Okay. Almost done here. It's just so tight. Look at that bone just sitting on the nerve right there. That's the S1 nerve root. Wow. That was literally just sitting on the S1 nerve root right there. That's literally the S1 nerve right there. 
So I don't know if that answered your question. I hope it did, but um, the problem is most spine surgeons don't do the surgery right the first time. They don't correct the deformity. They leave the patient with a flat back, like kyphosis or flat back deformity. Um, and they uh, don't treat all the levels that need to be treated with that first surgery. And they, um, uh, yeah, that's, those are the two main reasons. Under treatment and improper treatment. And it's usually a combination. I'm not gonna sit here and defend spine surgeons that don't deserve to be defended because their practice of medicine is not so good. All right, I'm going to remove that drill. Just about done with the decompression and osteotomy. Harrison three, and then four. None of this bone should be here. Three. Not quite literally suck, please. That is the that is the L5 ner nerve root just getting crushed right here. Incredible. I cannot. There. Are you seeing anything? I'm like right on top of the L5 root and it's just getting hammered in the foramen drill. Actually, let me see a cob bovie. <laughs> What? You need me or somebody else? Look at that hypertrophy. It's where the S1 screw goes right there. Screw. Just opening up the frame and, and I can't really do it with the kerosene because it's not strong enough to go through all that bone. Kerosene three. So I drilled all that down and now I can do it. See that? Much easier to bite it off and get out there. All right, we're done there. Now I opened up the frame in there. Nice. Still have to get rid of this stuff here. Right there, drill. Because I got to get to the disc to put the cage in. So I need to bring this down to the pedicle. Please don't do that. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. All right, Joe Phone Thrombin. This is the left foramen at L5S1, the nerve roots decompressed. Remember what I told you, there's two parts of the foramen, a bottom half and a top half. Top half has a nerve root exiting. Bottom half has a carbon of Camden's triangle. It's the safe zone. It has basically has the disc there, which we're gonna go get in a minute. I just want to let this, like Hungarian goulash, I want to let it sit and um, what do you call it? Marinate. marinate. Yeah, marinate. I am hungry. <laughs> Suck here. You know, in medicine, the pathologists who describe all the diseases, they just use, they use t terms of hunger and food. Oh my God, yeah, everything in medicine that's abnormal is like named after a, a type of food. Like port wine stain, like port wine stain, right? Or caseating necrosis, that means cheese. So it looks like cheese. 
Because they were hungry all the time, those pathologists. They didn't get paid very much. Here. Care, care some fun. We're almost done. Last for Raymond to open. Last osteotomy, and we are done. We've done osteotomies bilateral. Two, three, four, and five. That's eight osteotomies. And it takes a long time. So right here is the last foramen on the right, and that's where the, uh, right there, suck there. You can actually probably see the shoulder of the root exiting. That would be the L5 nerve root leaving out of the L5 S S1 foramen. And I'm going to, is that my headlight? Already? Let's get a battery ready, please. So this is a giant pedicle. I'm gonna cut right through it. You ready? Here we go. Remember, stay away from the, sorry, not pedicle, but pars. Stay away from the uh, pedicles. You don't want to damage them. Why don't you want to damage the pedicles? Simple. You're putting your screw in there. Yeah, the moment you start damaging it, then your screw is not going to hold in there very good because it's damaged. No purchase. Okay, Kerosene 5. I know it looks like a bug nut mess right now, but there's actually a, the good thing is the beauty of surgery is that the anatomy is consistent. Unless of course someone's been in there doing surgery, I need the cracker. So once you learn the anatomy uh, as a surgeon, you know where everything else is. And the most important anatomy in spine surgery is the patel, bony anatomy. Everything is related to the bones, including the nerves. Everything, the bones. Once you understand where the facet is, where the pedicle is, where the pars is, where the, the um, lamina are, once you understand those an anatomical features, which by the way are identified on x-ray properly, then you can safely do surgery. This is a ginormous facet. Did you already grind all the others down? Did you? Do you have any facets left? Or did you already grind them? Oh, I just grinded. Do you have any left or no? Uh, this thing is a giant, a giant facet, just to show you. I was going to compare this one to the others, but you, know, you can kind of get an idea. It's huge, full of bone spurs, okay, because of the arthritis. All right, Woody, how much blood loss? I don't know. I'd wait till it goes out. Can I, uh, <laughs> That's fine. Can I, uh, My battery. I'm not I, a robot. Can I grind these ones? Go, grind it. Oh, well, that's what happens when you when you don't have light. Let there be light. Not yet. There we go. All right. That's lateral recess stenosis right there at five one. This is foramenal stenosis, real bad. Let me have a K four. Do not try this at home, folks. Right here. Right? I cannot see. Help me. Help me. Come on, Jane. Gotta stay faster. Move those hands fast. I cannot get out here. Show me, show me. Come on, wipe, wipe. You're just standing there. So you have to service Patel and me both. I need a Kerosene 3. Cannot see. A lot of what I do, by the way, is feel. You can't really feel what I'm feeling. It's impossible through the uh, camera here. Oh yeah, that was a blow for freedom. All right, uh, uh, let's have a, let's have a uh, drill. Uh, no, a cob and a bovie. So that's so tight. 
Now remember the yeah the framing was tighter on on, um, on that side, higher up too. So that's stenosis. Large bite. I'll take the bobby back after the large bite. I'm trying to get rid of this schmutz. Yeah. That's the proper way to grab it, by the way. I'm glad you did it that way. Take. Drill. Look at how hard that bone is. Drill. All right, so... This is the L5 pedicle, this is the S1 pedicle, this is the foramen, this is the superior S1, super articular process, and it is literally going in and crushing the exiting root, so I have to remove it. This is part of the Smith-Peterson osteotomy, but it's also part of uh, uh, the decompression, right? Because if I don't do this, I still have compression. This is not part of a laminectomy, so this is where the Smith-Peterson osteotomy kerosene for becomes uh, decompressive. I cannot get in there. Let me have the cracker. I may have to drill. Cracker. Take. Oh, look at that. Holy Hanoi. Holy mackerel. That thing is just crushing on the nerve. I need to do something here. I don't know. I may need a bovie right away. Uh, let me think. Let me have a small cob and a bovie. And a towel. I'm kidding. It's from my sweat. Large bite. Let me take it. So this thing is just sitting on the nerve root. And this is why my patients do so well with their leg symptoms. Because I unpinch the nerves properly. Careful with the dura. Don't worry about that. Get the sucker out of there. Let's get the sucker over there. Go from lots of it. We just decompressed the nerve root. So that was beautiful. Oh my gosh, we're done with the uh, laminectomy and osteotomy. As my grandfather and grandmother used to say, tanks God. They were from the old country. Suck. Armenia. All right, beautifulness. Don't suck that out. You're just going to start bleeding over there if you keep doing that. Uh, no, no, no. No. Yes. All right. So we have done our all of our bone work. We've taken out the lamina, the spinous process. We've taken out the pars. We've got through the pars. We've taken out the facets on both sides at four levels. Uh, and now we're ready to do our inner body cage, inner body fusion. A little fat pad, just leave it alone. You guys ready? At this point, I'm going to take the sucker. Pick up our bipolar. Yeah, a lot of fat there. Wipey, wipey. Wipey, wipey. All right, here's fat. We got to get rid of it. There's the S1 nerve root right there. You see that white thing? All right, I need micro Uh huh. So here's where I am. I'm at the bottom of the foramen, above the pedicle of S1. I'm taking down the uh, Batson's plexus veins, otherwise, they'll bleed. 
and again we don't care about the fat but if it gets in the way we got to deal with it stuck to the dura there like i showed you earlier i told you earlier a lot of times with the chronic inflammation you get these adhesions that is not a normal thing right there get my bipolar ready when you cut these veins you never want to cut too close to the dura or to the bipolar um, to the fat you want to just give yourself plenty of room all right what we're really interested in is this area down here because that's where the disc is look at that little adhesion look at that little vein i can feel the disc right now i'm just above it i'm bipolaring this is called cambin's triangle it's right above the pedicle the pedicle is right here don't give me that cable there. Ah, don't do that. Put it into my hand in a way I can use it, please. I'm right above the pedicle, okay? Do not put... Oh, my God. Wipe. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Come on, take this. Come on, come on, come on. I need that. All right, so here's the thecal sac. And then there's the axilla right there. That's the S1 nerve root. There's the disc. All right, that's the L5S1 disc right there. No, 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 not yet. I want to look here. A lot of times you can get a little better if you just bipolar this, but you don't want to bipolar the nerve root above, which is the L5. That would be really bad. Sorry. We've got music going. Please stop. We can have fun as long as you guys pay attention to the details. All right, now I can have you in. Fifth, 11, uh, 15 blade. All right, so now we're going to cut through the disc. This is the annulus fibrosis. You can see it's a bulging disc right there. There's been tears, and you've got bulging of the nucleus through the tear. What kind of specimen? Pituitary skinny. Okay, please try to, don't hit my fingers. Hey, do you need a lab in your hand? All right, I need a shaver, a small four. All right, now we're gonna go inside the disc and we're gonna shave the disc that's in there out. We're literally removing the entire disc right now. The laser surgery I do just fixes this part of the disc and we're done. We would have been done with laser surgery hours ago. All right. Got to be careful because I don't have a very good hold there. There we go. Now, <clears throat> this is difficult to do, but you want to tap this shaver in in a way that it doesn't fracture the bone. In the early days, I didn't understand the concept and I would guide it where I wanted it to go, but sometimes you go into the vertebral body, you don't want that. You want to go in the disc. So let it go path least resistance, which is the disc. Unless you have an osteoporotic patient, this could be the bone. So you have to be careful and check with x-ray. All right, so I'm aiming medial towards the other side. I want to get across the disc, go to the hilt, and you can see the spine moving, okay? When I apply distractive force. What is that? A Six? Oh, yeah. A little more. A little Billy Idol. Good for the soul. Quick wipe. There's your disc material, folks. It's not a liquid for those of you who think it's a liquid. It's actually like crab meat. But, yeah, you can send it. But that's, you're going to get a lot of that. But that is, um, that's what the degenerated disc looks like. It's gray and brown and just disgusting. It looks like a, a dry booger. Go a little more medium. We got plenty, we're gonna have plenty coming out. All right, bipolar. Let's go, buddy. All right, so I got a little volcano of disc right here. This is in a lateral. 
in the foramen, I mean. All right, let me have a kerosene number four. Now I'm going to open this hole up. I need you to toe in, Pato. Toe in. Can you go more, or is it too tight? There you go. That's, 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 that's. Why am I opening this hole? Very important. You're going to get the biggest cage in here you can. If you don't do this, then these little bone spurs on the edge will block your cage, a bigger cage from going in. Kerosene 5. So you want the biggest cage into that space. The bigger the cage, the more correction of deformity you can get. Okay? Let me have a shaver. Bigger. What do you got? So I didn't do an 8 yet. Aim across. Why am I hitting resistance? Okay, of course you want to be careful not to... Uh, this is going to be a short cage. I don't want to go too far. This is an 8. So we're going to do... this. Sh I should be able to get it. I just did. We should, we should be able to do a 12 cage. Yeah, 12 millimeters tall. Let me in there. You need a bigger pituitary. Look at that disc material. And I told you you get plenty of specimen. So this is called a pituitary, in case you were wondering. It's one of our standard tools in neurosurgery. It used to be used to take pituitary tumors out, and then we figured out we can use it in spine surgery quite nicely. You've got to be careful as you do this. You don't want to penetrate the disc and go into the abdomen or pelvis and pull out the intestine or the kidney or ureter or anything else. A little fetus. Um, so that was an eight. Now let me think. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let me open this up a little more with a four. Kerosene. Are you happy, medial? Let me get. Let me get. See. Let me see what you got. So Dr. Patil is protecting the actual nerves. Right there. I'm not happy with that. Let me get a drill. I'm looking straight into the disc, guys and gals. What? Who, Zane? All right, see this drill tip? I am entering the disc. I'm in the front of the disc down there. I don't want to drill down there, but I want to open this a little bit because there's a bone spur here. Protect me. And now he's, let me show him. That's the S1 nerve root right there, right there. Could we track it? So Patel is protecting it with his left hand sucker. I'm going to open this up because I don't want this cage getting stuck on the way in. Just want to get rid of some of these spurs. Huh? What? You got to be careful when you're drilling around the nerve roots, obviously. Irrigation. Let me have the, uh, what's it called? File. Yeah. The rest. All right, we're going in with the rest. This is going to scrape the end plates up, get rid of the cartilage, and fracture the end plates. Mallet. Why do I want to fracture the bone? That's how you fuse. You have to fracture to fuse. Suck, please. Suck, suck. Well, we're going to be getting juice squirted on our eyes. This is a great song. All right. So I'm trying to scrape the surface. You got a short cage, right? Let me have a pituitary. Pituitary. A what? Here, I want to get some more disc out, guys. Hmm, this guy is okay. This is all degenerated disc, mostly nucleus propulsus. We leave the annulus there, so we're not taking the whole disc out. We're only taking the jelly in the center out. Here, wipe. You all see down there, John? Really good? Yes, we can see it. Nice. All right, we're done. So now I'm going to pack that space. Wait, let me have the pituitary one more time. Maybe a little piece in there. Good. We're going to pack some bone in there so we can fuse it. Take, take, wipe, wipe. Don't rip my finger off, just wipe the shit on the finger off. Huh? His internal stimulus told that. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. 
I shouldn't have gotten you started. <laughs> You're so bad. Here. All right. I hope this 12 will work. We've packed this peak cage with bone. It's got these tantalum markers. You can see them, the little metal studs. Let's see what we can do here. Move. Yep. Oh. This may be too big for this space. What is it, 12 you said? Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. Let's go, let's go with an 11. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to take any chances. We'll probably use it. Yeah. So just save it, but give me an 11. All right. So this is the transforaminal lumbar inner body fusion part. Don't suck all the bone graft out. We are going through the foramen, therefore transforaminal lumbar, because this is the part of the body we're operating on inner body because we're actually putting our fusion between the bones which are called vertebral bodies they're in the front of the spine so we're accessing the front of the spine through the back mm. take your time i'm enjoying the music any questions john uh yes one of our viewers is wondering what is all the extra support and preparation that goes into surgery like this behind just the surgeon um what's all the extra support and preparation it's a good question there's quite a bit i mean it all starts with an initial evaluation like you know figuring out looking at the mri and examining the patient to make sure this surgery would help them so kind of looking at the patient's symptoms doing an exam on them making sure the back pain tight uh you know, correlates with these bad discs, making sure the leg symptoms correlate with pinched nerves. Suck, suck. That's good. It's nice and deep. Yeah, gel foam, please. Um, huh? I don't know the depth. I look at the uh, where the disc margin is right there, the bone, and it's just based on that shaver. Remember the shaver I put in? I know how long those shavers are. They're consistent. And that was a shorter one, a little bit shorter, so I know that the difference between the back of the cage to the back of the bone is just based on experience. So there's uh, the initial evaluation, which Duke Spine Institute does over the internet. You don't even have to come here, release. You can do it over the internet virtually through telemedicine. Then um, once we've determined that you're a candidate for the surgery based on your MRI and based on your symptoms and the physical exam findings, we then um, have the patient uh, come in and do all the paperwork and pick a date. And then we come here and do it. I mean, it's really, we do this so many times, it's like uh, not hard. It's really not that hard to do. And that's why we broadcast so you guys could see the process. All right, bipolar, look at that, pretty beautiful. Bipolar quickly. So we got a disc here with some veins on the back. Is there a specific uh, question or topic I can address because it's um, it's pretty easy to do. We do need to get insurance authorization, you know. So we're gonna submit a letter to the insurance company asking them to approve the surgery for whatever reason, like pinch nerves or pain or whatever, and the structural findings and. And then just get the patient here, do the surgery. A lot of these people we do come from out of the out of the area, out of the state, out of the country. As a matter of fact, we are in the process of designing and building our new facility here, which is going to allow us to do these, take patients from out of the country and keep them uh, in a recovery center for a few days if they need to. But this patient's going to go home basically after the surgery. 15 blade. We do outpatient surgeries like this, so. We just need to coordinate having somebody with you, watching you while you're healing up the first night. We don't want to leave anybody alone. So you need an able-bodied adult to be with you, driving you after surgery back to the hotel or back to your home. We've been doing this for eight years now. Here. No, 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 no. I need the pituitary first. Narrow. 
So I've cut through the annulus and now we're inside the disc. I'm gonna use my shavers again. The first one is a six. Six, six, six shaver, come on guys. No, I don't want a four, six. If I want a four, I'll say four. Six. The other one had to be a four because it was collapsed more than this. All right, so see how I, I don't hit it hard and it goes. Now you see how I sunk it to the hilt right there? That means I can use a medium cage. It's hard to rotate and I don't want to fracture the end plates, but I know he's got good strong bones, so I'm, I'm more uh, I'm liberal with turning. Come on, man, you got to give me the instrument. You can't just hold it. I don't take instruments out of your hand. You put them in my hand. Right. Let me have a pituitary skinny again. That's a fat one. I want a skinny one. Skinny, 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 come on. First one is always skinny. Bipolar. Go, let's go. Why, why do we try to move things along quickly? Because these are already long surgeries, and we don't. If you take twice as long to hand me something, then the surgery goes from four hours to eight hours, right? Harrison, let's see. Let me get an eight shaver. I don't know if I can get an eight, okay? It's a pretty scarred up disc. It doesn't wanna, it's non-compliant. It doesn't wanna open. So this is an eight. I don't think I can get it yet. Let me have the six back again. The, the risk I have, if the scar tissue is holding this disc together and these bones together, then I'm pushing apart with the shaver and I could really crack the bone and fracture it and we don't want to fracture it. Take, do a narrow. Don't pop your glove. You haven't damaged your glove, right? Yeah, I heard a snap. All right, so this is L45. We've already done 5.1. I'm reaching across. You can see the crab meat. I mean, the degenerative disc coming out. Okay. Huh? No, it's going to be a, what did we get? We, we have, we've only done a six. Yeah, correct. Harrison four. If I get the eight, it's definitely going to be an 11 or a 10. Okay, you ready? So I turn north and south. Come on, dude. Duke's spine is hiring. Um, if you're a perfectionist like we are, apply. You'll enjoy working here. Um, we're always looking for people because we're growing. So if you have a position, let's have a five that you're interested in. Contact HR, see if we're looking at that time. All right. Yeah, wipey, wipey. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to get a 12 in here. There's no way. Are you protecting the Dura Patel? I knew you were going to do that. You have a double. Let me see the Dura. Good. See that? A little spur, a vein on top. Well, you're all getting a front row seat to a live spine surgery done here at Duke Spine Institute. You're watching an outpatient multi-level wipe, decompression and fusion. What do we do, a six last? Let's go with an eight. Mallet. See, it's doing it again, right? It's not going all the way because of the rotation. I'm probably hitting the annulus. This is an eight. I would say then uh, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, 10. 10, uh, short's fine. Now the rotating shaver scrapes all the disc material. 
I'll need a, a drill. Drill. Huh? What? I'm just holding it. Yep. Rasp. 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 Let me in. I got a feel too. It's not just a sight thing. Now, if I need it, nope. Okay. Scraping the cartilage off the bones so we can promote fusion. All right, bone graft. Bone graft. Now we're packing the auto graft. This is the patient's own bone that we've cleaned up. Remember we did the laminectomy earlier and uh, took the osteotomy and we're basically packing this bone in to promote fusion. That's good enough. I need the cage now. Any more, John? Uh, yes. One of our just Facebook. Keep firing away. All right. One of our Facebook viewers is wondering, what are the different members of the surgical team in there with you? All right. Yes. Different members. Mallet. I have the anesthesiologist who has the patient, giving them the anesthesia, watching their airway and making sure they're saturating good and safe from a cardiopulmonary standpoint. I have, this is a good piece of bone, I have the uh, technician monitoring the nerves with the neurologist as well. And I have the uh, nurses, of course, circulating. I've got my two assistants, uh, technicians. And that's Luis and Zane. I have Dr. Patel. Luis is insane. I have Dr. Patel, who's the other pair of hands you're watching. He's the assistant surgeon. What the fuck was that? Thank you very much. God damn it. I need irrigation here. I don't know what that was. Let's get, um, let's get my lead off. Gonna have to take a moment. Um, do we have any bacitracin? No, it's not recalled. That's incorrect. It was just, they stopped making it. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to take my lead off. Hold that. Is it okay to drop it? I should have just put my lid on later. Take that. Um, so what do we have available for irrigation? That's an answer. Do you guys know what polymyxin is? It's mostly fungal. Go ahead and add that. Can, uh, Actually, some banco, but banco is not going to mix in the water well. Hmm? Just irrigate over there, very good, and and irrigate the surface. Patel, do, are you kidding me? No, Clinda doesn't do shit. Okay. For topical. No, we we. You're not understanding. Bank doesn't get into water. It's not soluble. It's poorly soluble. In water. Genomycin is gram negative. We need gram positive coverage. That's why bacitracin is so useful. That's why we need it again. Who's finding it? Okay, why don't you go check with Rita and find out when she's going to have some for us? Nope. We're going to put bank at the end.
You have another gown and gloves. Maybe I didn't address this issue. Okay. See sweat? I, your head's wet, but I don't see sweat dripping. Let me go address that. Okay. I may lose you guys on the first person. I need a new hat. Yes, I switched feeds to the overhead. So John, our camera may not be centered like it was before. So not much I can do about that. Right, I'll put on the uh, on the head cam and just check the view, and then if not, I'll let Sonny know if you want. What do you say? I didn't hear John. What did you say, John? I have the uh, the overhead view on now. If that's what you if that's what you want. You're you're supposed to be the eye in the sky. Yeah, I have the eye in the sky. Third person, we call it. Yeah, that's what I have. It's a little hard to hear you, though. Just a heads up. It's what? It's a little hard to hear you. I don't know why. Why would it be hard to hear me? I haven't done anything. Is it hard now? You guys irrigate the hell out of everything? That's better. I'm going to have to probably regown again later. Sonny, find out if Sonny's got the temperature all the way down. I mean, I can't imagine it wouldn't be. What's the temperature reading in here? Hmm? 61. And the humidity? Oh, yeah, today is hot. That's right. And it's 1230. 69% humidity? 59. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just the out ambient oh, yeah. temperature outside the building. That's the problem. Hmm? 100, 104? Oh, yeah. Oh. That's insane. Have you guys irrigated everything? How much did you guys irrigate? Huh? What we need? Luis, how much we irrigate? Luis! Did you irrigate here? I don't see this. Irrigation. Yes, sir. Get more irrigation, please. Yes, Tuck, please. That's what irrigation is, guys. Come on. This is all dry when I came in. All right. Luis? Yes, I want Bass to trace in here by next week. You understand? I don't want to have to repeat myself. All right, let's see the next level, suction. Pick up. Who? Luis? Bipolar. All right, so what questions are we addressing, John? There are no further questions at this time. What was the last one? I don't know if I got it all the way. Did they? What was the last one? 
the last ones were about the surgical team members in there. Hey, and dude, then I do the same thing every time. It's bye, bye, bye here, okay? So stop letting it hit your hand and stop getting this caught in your your uh, towel, okay? Please, it's just, it's like sticking your dick in a fucking meat grinder and doing it again and again and again, over and over and over again. How many times do you have to do it before you learn your lesson? Okay, pituitary. You know, surgery is already hard enough to do without you, with you getting your do job done right. Let me have this. Let me have this piece of ligament here. This is in the way. No, don't stick my hand with the tines. Come on. What was the last question, John? The last questions were about the surgical team and then Why don't the you review. you answer it a little more for them? Do you know the team members, John? What the fuck is that? Where yes, that I can go ahead and I can answer it for them. I'll respond to them. What is it? I, I just saw something. It must be my glasses. Do you see anything over here? Irrigate here, off. This way. It must be my mask. Your mask is a little, like, here, let me wipe it. It's kind of sweaty. That's not going to do it. It's got to go under the mask. Under the mask. Under the mask? That's where the sweat is, okay? okay? It's not on the surface. Well, there was some on the side. Sorry, there. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, let me just untie the back. Do you see any? Do you feel any? No, I got, there was some moisture on the teeth that I wiped on. Ah. Uh. Okay, bacitracin is allowed to be used. I've already talked to our pharmacist. It's just going to be hard to find. Okay. What? I don't give a fuck who has this discussion. There's nobody in the world that knows more about surgery, spine surgery, than me. Nobody. And everything to do with it. Yeah. So I don't give a shit about Melbourne. I want bacitracin. What does bacitracin kill? Gram positive. No. Gram positive. What fault? What's the number one cause of infection? Gram positive. I don't give a fuck about clindamycin. Gram negative. I don't care about genomycin. Gram negative. I want bacitracin in my irrigation. The dumb motherfuckers in the federal government and nurses and shit that said bacitracin is bad for you. I've been using it 26 years in neurosurgery. We have never seen anything bad with bacitracin. It is the stupidest shit. You know, it's like Parish Medical Center when they took the high volume toilets and switched them with the low flush toilets for a million dollars. And then now everybody has to flush the toilet three times to get the shit to go down. Okay? This is dumb people in healthcare, ruining healthcare for everyone. Nobody should have ever said anything about bacitracin. It's a very valuable antibiotic. And it's, it primarily combats surgeon's sweat dropping into the wound. Okay? Great, then just communicate that later by yourself. All right, so we're doing the discectomy now at 3-4. Again, these are very collapsed discs. Bipolar. Let me have a shaver, probably a four.
Come on, put it in. Hello, McFly. I need the next size up. All right, we're going in through the back of the disc, left side, transferiminal. This is a discectomy. We're using a metal shaver to do it. It's pretty standard stuff. Nothing exciting or exceptional here. That's a six? Yes, sir. All right, skinny pituitary. I'm gonna try an eight, but keep that six handy. Do not take it off. I'm gonna use a kerosene number three. See how small that hole is? You've got to open it or you won't get the biggest cage in. Why is there this shit on there? How's the view through the uh, first person anyway? Give me a four. Good. The first person view is all right. It's a little off centered, it looks like. It's a little off? A little bit, but it looks like for the most part we can see the entire um, field of the surgery. I don't know what you're saying. You're mumbling. It's either centered or not. It's a little off-centered, but we can still see the field of surgery. Four. So it's either off-centered, looks fine, or it's off-centered and we need to fix it because it's really bad. Which one is it? It looks fine. Jane, come on, man. It's the same amount of time every time. Sometimes it doesn't work out. And it's fine. All right, let's see what we got here. You're not retracting too hard, right? Is that an eight? That's an eight. Yes, Good. That sunk in pretty good there. All right, this is an eight, you said? I think we can probably, look how much the spine moves, by the way, when you just put a cage in or spread, put a little distracting force. I gotta be able to see this thing. I don't know, it's really close. We're definitely, we're, gonna, we're not gonna go more than a 10 here. Yeah, 10. care much for this. Yeah. This is um, Metallica. It's just not really that good of a song. We have a K4. I want to open this up. K4, K4. I don't really stop and not do anything. So it's always going to be an instrument every time. That looks pretty good. Let's get the shape of uh, rasp. Mm -hmm. Yep. More what? More graph. That's fine. Do it, Terry. Good. Bone grab. Grab this. I'll need it back right now. Keep an eye on my there's any sweat accumulating. Okay, will you do that, Luis? Huh? Yeah, if he, who can, whoever can see it, if you see a problem, let me know if you see moisture droplets on my tape, especially. Okay? So I'm packing this bone in there. 
Remember, we want a fusion in the inner body space. Cage. This is our second to last cage. We've got one more after this. Let me see, Patel. I can't. All right, drill. Let me have the drill. Take this. I got to drill this down. Cage. And this is a 10. What was that? Oh. You have a bigger impact here. These are too small. Now it. Show me, show me. Yeah. That looks good. All right. Pick up. No. What is this stuff flying around? Why? How did the bone just go flying over there? Right? Come out. What? No, it's real. There's a piece of bone. But it may have come off Patel sucker or something. That's why I don't like having stuff attached. All right, we need to get rid of this large bite. Large bite. Bobby. A nice view. What was that? That's just triggering a muscle. Oh, Bobby, okay spread of the electrical signal. Large bite. Mm -hmm. I may need the bovie again. Let's see a K5. How's the patient? Doctor? Dr. Rafferty? He's good? Tucker? Alright, this is our last disc and bipolar. Gentle, gentle, this is up at L2, 1, 2, or 2, 3, I mean. So we don't want to get the cord. Help me see. Oh, no, no, not too much. Come off, let me see. And just make sure you're under the dura right there, yeah. Sometimes the dura gets stuck down to the back of the disc. EMG activity than I really want, but that's fine. We're just about done with the hard part. All right, 15 blade. I don't know what I can fit in this last disc. They're all pretty collapsed, but I don't know that we're going to get that 12 in this case. No, 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 I four. No, I need you to tow in more. A little more Patel. Right there is fine. That's the four is the way to go. Four, we said? That's terrible. All right. 
I don't know, I'll try. Let's see what we got here. Actually, I think we're gonna go with like an eight cage. I wanna, eight, eight cage. Two a Terry? Eight short. See the posterior ligament there? Wait, wait, is that? Or is that Dura? Huh? That's Dura. Fucking hell. Woody. Gotta be careful. Is that posterior ligament or Dura? No, it's Dura. It's Dura, Dura, Dura. You don't know? You gotta be under the Dura, man. This is what I'm talking about. The Dura can scar. You gotta be careful. You don't wanna get a fluid leak. Go ahead. There we go. There it is again, right there. See that? So you gotta free it up because there's so much inflammation in this disc. Look at the scar tissue. Look at that right there. You see that scar tissue? You see it? Toe, toe in. See the scar tissue right there? Right there. Okay, and I'm trying to break it up. All right, that's good. So we got a six, you said? Let me have the pituitary. That's good. You're perfect right where you are. Go, go. Give me a three. Don't block my path. I can't see. Help me. Don't pull the root onto me. And we got an eight cage. Let me see. Let me have a four. I don't want to get the Dura. Can you see? All right. Let me have a pituitary. I don't even know if I can get an eight in there, but that's the smallest we have, right? Yes, sir. Fine. Let me have a shaver six again. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now what? Uh, all right. And then graft, no rest. No rest? No rest. I'm clogged. Clear me. Clear that sucker. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, we're okay. We don't need any of that. Yeah. Let me get in. Can't see. Wow, that was tough. I need the skinny impactor. Okay, got it. All right. Show me. Great job, almost done. Let me see. Good, off, off, off. Great job. Oh, I'm still clogged. I told you to unclog this. You didn't listen. Here, off. We're gonna put screws in. What? What'd you say? I tell. I need my sucker. Holy cannoli. So I'll take it. Gonna We're going to put screws in. I need irrigation. Big irrigation. Suck, suck. Uh, you need to get a suction thing on there. You're going to suck all the gel foam out. You can't do that. You need a tip. What the fuck is the irrigation? What don't you understand about big irrigation? Get more irrigation. 
All right, we need the floral in. Well, I said we're going to put screws, so I hope it's on the way. We need the table up. He said it's clogged, Zane. Come on, man. I need to get some lead on. I'm taking my, um, gonna take my gown. I need a new gown. Don't get too close. You have gown and gloves for me? Monica coming? Yes. All right, I need my lead. Okay. I'm gonna change. Yeah. Hang on, folks, while I get changed back in the lead. All right, John, can you hear me okay? John? Yes, sir. Awesome. What? That's not John. John, did you have a surgical procedure? <laughs> no, sir. I can't even guess who that is. It's obviously... One of our female staff. Monica, welcome to the operating room. Oh. 
Yeah. I'm starting to feel it. What? You see where it's a step and the uh, yeah, yeah. spine? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's perfect. Well, I haven't checked actually, I should say. I don't know if it's perfect, but. Uh, oh, we're on the Jackson table, yes. I guess it's okay, right? Yeah, I mean. We'll find out. Bato, how are you doing? Good. All right. We are in the last uh, phases of the surgery, and really our biggest issues today, besides having a really super smooth surgery, was we had a sucker issue where we dropped the sucker. We had to put a new one on, and we got a little bit sidetracked with the suction canister, but then the other thing is there was some, we believe a little bit of sweat because it's so hot outside, apparently it's over 100 degrees, and our air conditioning system can only do so much. So surgeons do tend to sweat, especially wearing lead, but we're gonna take care of that with putting antibiotics in the wound. All right, let's see what we got here. I got the drill pedal. We're getting ready to do the screwing. All right. So, we need to be up north, and we need to be zoomed in, okay? North and zoomed in. That's not zoomed in. I want you to look at that surface. That should be up against the patient. That's zoomed in. That's how we do it every single time. We're not interested in the holistic view of the spine, though that looks really good. Did you get that spine shot there? It looks perfect. We've uh, got our cages in perfect position, good lordosis. We've probably given another five or six degrees of lordosis. All right, where are you at, Monica? Shot? Monica, are you not understanding? This has to be against the patient. This has to be against the patient. Just tell me when you get there. I'll wake me up, okay? And now north, we want to see L2. That's where the first screw is going to go. We work our way down, just like we always do. I know it's been a while. All right, let's get those L2 pedicles lined up. Can, can you see them? Monica, at the top. You're too far south, Monica, too far south. Shot. Oh, that's really good, actually. Really good. Right there is perfect. Now, you see that view? We only have two vertebrae, right? The top one that gets screwed, it's in the center. That's what we want to see. All right. I need a drill. You guys ready? So, I'm going to go to the mammillary process we talked about earlier. We're doing left two, shot. Okay. Perfect. All right, I need the pedicle finder. Okay. So I usually use a drill. Oh wait, take your time. I don't want anybody falling off. We've done gone so far here. Thank you. We don't need any accidents. This is a long case. All right, here we are going in and shot. Wait, is this the sharp one or the dull one? Hello shot, hello shot. Yes, it's looking good, looks good. Luis. Shot. I'm loving it, look at that. That's perfect trajectory kind of the middle of the pedicle. And how far in do we want to go? We want to go in uh, about two thirds of the way, plus or minus. It depends, but sometimes we go bicortical, we go out the front, because that way you can get better purchase. You do that when somebody's kind of big and a lot of mass. Um, I don't know that we need to do that here. So I'm gonna go six, five, what is that? 60, 50, is 45? 6, 5, 45, or 50. What do you think, Patel? Looks like shot. Now, I'd say 45. 6, 5, 45. Tap, 5, 5, tap, go. Okay, you want to use your fluoro and your anatomy. 
that you can see. Shot. Thank you. And you're pulsing, right? Yeah, we just need pulse. Ball tip. I'm going to make sure we didn't breach. Come on, come on, come on. Give me the screw ready. Feels good. Come on. Gotta put a, you all right? The cork in the bottle, shot. And the reason I'm angling hard is that it's, um, you have to come from the side, aiming middle. To tell you want to finish it. All right, we got about probably 35 minutes, 40 minutes. You want to? Start going to Tiva or something. I mean, get them off the gas. Start wake. Start getting them ready to wake up. Shot. That should be good. Uh, does that affect your? Does that affect your? It doesn't affect the waveforms, right? No, no, sir. Shouldn't affect them negatively, at least. All right, shot. Mm -hmm. What is it, John, you have a question? Yeah, so if you were wondering, how does the locking mechanism for the screws and all work? You'll see. The locking mechanism of every screw set is different. And these have a, a, a buttress set screw. Shot. I'll show it to you in a little bit. It's aiming a little further south than I want to go. Uh, we're at right two. And basically it's a, a high torque, high torque, high tension uh, mechanism. Where you're just seating the set screw into the tulip head after you put the rod in. Shot. Shot. This is going to be a, a 45. 6545. Ready? Did I go outside or not? I did, right? Mm -hmm. Shot. This is the hardest part of the surgery, by the way. This top screw. Um, really hard to get up there and work around those cerebellar's uh, ball tip. Where are you putting our blood loss so far? I'm thinking since I've been here, we've lost about 150. What did Patel lose prior to me coming? 50? So maybe 200. Uh, we've used, no, we've used a few liters of irrigation. Two hundred. Yeah, I think 150 to 200 so far. We'll probably lose another 50 on closing. Shot. Yeah, go ahead, Patel. Aim it north, so keep your hand south. All right, so we're just popping in this uh, 45 millimeter long screw. Rela Let me see. And one of the nice things you can see is that we've derotated the spine. We've gotten a really good correction of his, um, what's called the coronal deformity. Feel good? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Almost done. Stop. Done. Shot. Perfect. Out. Oh, no, 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 no. This right here. This right here. The collar. I'll give it to you, Bruce. Thank you. Good job, Patel. Beautiful, beautiful. The rest of these screws are a little bit easier. I, of course, I'll jinx, my, jinx myself. All right, you ready? Let's look at the next one. Large bite. Look at it. Show it to me. No, good, 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 good. No, no, no. Here, here, here. 
Large bite. We need to take this, this junk off right here. See that? Bobby. Any more questions, John? Ay, cabrón. Suck it. Uh, no, no questions at this time. <clears throat> Give me some bone wax on a kitty. Now, since we're not really fusing that, here's the bone wax. And now you see, you hear it roar. I just need the, the pedicle finder. Mallet. All right, did you move south, Monica, Air Monica? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh, a little bit, just not much, a very little, because the L3 pedicle is perfect. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. You can see how easy it is to do these when uh, you can see everything, right? So it's, I don't force them. I just kind of wiggle them a little bit and do a little dance in the pedicle and try to get them to go. But I can feel there's a narrowing going on right at the isthmus. I'm trying to work my way past it with just real gentle taps. I don't want to breach outside. Sometimes it happens, not the end of the world. This is tight. This isthmus is tight. This guy has um, really normal length pedicles, but they're hypoplastic. So let's add hypoplastic pedicles, please. Okay. Uh, L2 to, I'm just going to assume it's S1. This is a 40. Okay, 6540. 6, 40. Hypo to L2. Hypoplastic pedicles, L2 to S1. Okay. We're just documenting our finding. Screw or ball tip and then screw. Okay, ball tip. That was a three left. Come on, man, you can't. Got to take it. My hand will release. Screw. That is not how the hand is. To, let go. Take this, please. Shot. Go ahead, butter. Aim it north a little. So Dr. Patel is helping me with the hardware. And again, we've corrected the scoliosis probably by around mm, six, 15, 16 degrees. You got an error message? Watch his back, please. Zane, don't touch it. Shot. Nice, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So on that side view, the pedicle isthmus looks wide, but it's not. So you can never tell on the x-ray, ever. It's something you feel as you put the screw in or the pedicle finder in. Nice job. It's a little low, but it's still polyaxial. Other side, Lexel. Show me, show me. You got to show me. Lexel, please. Don't make me ask for it twice. Let me see this with the set. It's right here, man. It's right there. Uh-huh. Yes. That's what I need to see. That bad boy. All right. Let me have it. Mallet. You see the diploic bone? That's where you go in. All right. You get it started and then get a lateral and shot. All right. Perfect. Look at that. I love it. These pedicles are lined up nicely now. Again, the isthmus is narrow. Shot. It's a hypoplastic pedicle. It's going to be another 6.5. Damn it. What is it? Just shit falling in? Shot. Shot. This is going to be a 40. 6540. Ball tip. Screw. We have another oh. question asking what anatomy gets removed during this surgery? 
what anatomy gets removed during the surgery. Sometimes I remove my surgical technicians, sometimes I remove my nurses, rarely the anesthesiologist, no. Um, we are, you know, we are going in the back of the spine taking so much. The supraspinous ligament, the interspinous ligament, the lamina, the spinous process, the uh, pars interarticularis, inferior facet, superior facet, go back a little bit. Um, foraminal ligament, ligamentum flavum, facet capsule, the disc, uh, some of the posterior lig longitudinal ligament. I think that's a good, you know, it's about right. We're leaving the vertebral body, the pedicles, and that's it, right? <laughs> when you do a Smith-Peterson osteotomy, you're leaving the vertebral body and the pedicles, that's it. And the end plates, all right, let me see here. I can't see anything. Somewhere around here, right? Right here? Oh, these things are narrow. I need the drill. I always use the drill, usually to start, especially if it's sclerotic bone. Very narrow. I can feel it. Shot. Oh, so tight. Severe, severe hypoplastic. Severe? Okay. Yeah, but it's fine. I'm just saying it. You don't have to add it. Okay. Shot. This is so tight. I don't think I can get a 6.5 in here. I don't know. I may need a 5.5. Five. Uh, I'll try a 6.5. This is going to be a 40. Okay. I may need a 5.5, five, so have it ready. A 5.5, five, 40. How's the uh, patient doing? Good. You got the two grams of ank? Yes. Is it two or one? We do two? Uh, I got, I got two. Yeah. I know he's really changed, though. Well. Oh, he is? Great. Yeah, I think two grams of ank would be good. Powder shot. We got the x already. Go ahead. All right, so we've done the screws at two, three, half of four going in, and then we'll do the right side of four. Anything on EMG? EMG is clear. So if I was hitting the nerve root right now, putting the screw in, he would see spikes on the EMG. Right, Dr. Patel? What's wrong? Shot, what? What? Something wrong, everything good? All right, huh? Uh, a little bit. I'll do it. You suck the other side. Yeah, it's an art form. What you want to think about is the trough lining up. You understand? Like, look at these troughs. Right? The trough. Here. You want to visualize the rod runs from this spot right here to this spot here to this spot here. So you want it to be like a smooth rather than steps, you know what I mean? All right, let's see what we got over here. What's that? Let me have a large bite. Just as a heads up, the first person view is obscured. I don't know if something's on the lens. So right now I'm using the third person. All right, that's fine. Bone wax on a kitty, bone wax on a kitty. Sorry. For those of you who are enjoying the first person view, we have to shift to a third person. We're good. Now let, we're going to go ahead and put our right screw at um, L4. Shot. Perfect. Here Patel. So you're going to um, just pull this a little lateral, not too hard though, gentle, and, and keep it going like that and just tap it in. And I like to wiggle it a little. No, no, no. Just let me show you. Just like this as you're smacking it. So it gets past the isthmus without cracking through it. Stop, shot. 
All right, it's perfect. Keep going. You're doing great. Little wiggle, little wiggle, little wiggle as you hit. Yeah, let it find its way. Shot. You're going to have another, what, 6540 ready? Wiggle, wiggle. A little more. Wiggle, wiggle, and hit. Wiggle, hit, wiggle, hit. That's good. All right, come out. That's it. Is that it? Come on out. Oh, don't, 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 wait, 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 wait. You can't do any, look at me. Yeah. Nothing like this, nothing like this. It's just out. It's twisting and out only. Otherwise, you'll loosen the, the pedicle and then your screw won't hold. I'm not saying you did that, but just don't do it. Here you go. Tap it. Keep it lateral to medial. Look at your trajectory on the x-ray. Look at your trajectory. Yeah, perfect. Keep going. I would tap it almost to the hilt. Good. And now come out. And get your ball tip. Come on. Here. Give that to him. Sound it. Feel it. Feel it. All that scrapey bone, like little bumpy bone. Yeah. All right, you don't feel muscle. Go in. Now push hard. Just nice and let it catch. And yeah, check your angle. Alignment. Oh, you are the man. More volume. Is this you too? Yes, sir. Beautiful. Wait, 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 wait. See how you're disengaged here? You don't want that to happen. You want to keep this down. Otherwise, it can pop out and hit the dura. Not that it's ever happened. All right, move the floral south, please, about an inch and a half. You know what blows me away is that my kids don't even know who, they didn't know who U2 was. They didn't know who Metallica was. They didn't know who Pink Floyd was. But now they do, because I've been playing the music. That's good, that's good, that's good. You want to keep it polyaxial. They're listening to this shit they play these days. It's garbage. I mean, we all sound like our Rap. Parents. We all sound like our parents, don't we, when we talk about our kids' taste in music? Yeah. Yeah. I got the same thing my dad. Yeah, but you know what? My parents' taste in music was actually pretty good. Bee Gees, uh -huh. ABBA, that kind of stuff. That was good music, you know? Careful, careful, careful. Oh. Alrighty, we're almost done. And you've got, did you move south already? Let me get in there, I gotta see. That's not a nerve, don't worry. Large bite? That's just a ligament or it's vein. All right, good. It's sad though, you know, because we, we listen to this music when it was appreciated by everyone worldwide and you can connect, you connected with your friends about it. Now, if you listen to U2, your friends might say, who the hell is U2? Shot. That's perfect. Yeah. You want to do another one? I'm sorry? Soft? Hypoplastic, that means soft or? No, no, hypoplastic means it's skinny, narrow. Oh, okay. It means the pedicle is yeah, narrow, right narrow. at the isthmus, right where he's passing through now. And um, the isthmus is the narrowest part. It's right where it attaches to the back of the vertebral body. And so uh, hypoplastic, normally like a guy like this should have a big one, right. a big isthmus. It should be easy to get the pedicle finder through his isthmus. but. Um, what I find is that almost all these people that do spine surgery, they have abnormal, yeah. let me have it, they have abnormal pedicles one way or the other, either short, see how you have to twist it a little bit, shot, this is a 6'5", 40, 6'5", yeah. 40, So they can either have short pedicles or skinny pedicles uh, congenitally. Shot, it's not something you acquire, it's something you're born with. And I believe that that predisposes people to having 
disc problems and stenosis and all these other need for surgery pr problems, symptoms. People with normal pedicles and normal short, I mean normal long pedicles, not short, like they're normal, they, I don't think they have uh, the symptoms bad enough to need surgery. But something about this, you know, congenital issues shot that in my opinion based on my many years of doing this definitely have an impact on people's need for surgery of course he had that when he was young right but he didn't have back problems but then I just think it predisposes you somehow maybe it's there's a a relationship between the formation of the pedicle and the bones with the formation of the disc where you have abnormal bone formation you get abnormal disc formation you know bones are formed in utero what's wrong shot is it good bones shot bones are formed in utero with um, you know gets good collagen you know elastin collagen form a matrix and then it's calcified let me have a cob and a large bite we're almost done with the screws everyone and then we're gonna literally be ready to close so surgery is almost over it's been a long one and uh, once again it's um, to treat scoliosis pr primarily and degenerated hernia disc bovi in a patient with bad back pain from injury to his disc if you ever get that bleeder when you play with the facet, it's always just lateral. So just get a bovey in there and just sweep lateral, and you'll get it. What artery is that, Patel? Is that the radicular artery or something? Yeah. Are you still bleeding or not? No. Gel foam? Let's put it, well, actually, let me do this first. Let me have the drill. I just want to create a tunnel. Live is okay. Live isn't bad. More questions, John? And I'll need gel foam in a minute. Okay. Now look at that. I can't get lateral, right? No, not yet. Because I'm hitting the retractor. So here's where you kind of go outside the retractor. What happened? Shot? Live version. I don't mind the live version. Oh, yeah? okay. What's wrong with it? Oh my God. This pedicle is so freaking tight. I may not even get a screw in here. Shot. Forty. Six five. You betcha. You gotta reset this. You hear me, Zane? Sorry. You have to reset it, Sean. Reset I know you know because you're doing it right most of the time, but you're not doing it right all the time. Now we're probably resetting it. But locks it, or? No, it allows you to um, torque it in different directions. Okay. In and out. This one, uh, 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 it's this one right here. If we pull this a little lateral. Uh, actually, just leave, let me see if I can just, there we go, that's good. Shot? All right, finish it. Don't wiggle it, just straight in. So we got two more screws to put in. Go south. I mean, look at that spine. It looks beautiful. Yeah, I'm telling you, the pedicles are just so tight. You went about an inch south, right? Okay. Keep going. Whoa, you're disengaged. That's what you got to be careful with. You don't want to disengage the screw. See it? Go ahead. Turn this while you're turning it. That way it won't disengage. There you go. 
And you know what I'm saying? You want to just turn like that without going like any of that wobbly. Keep going. A little more, a little bit more, one more turn. Let me see. Last two screws, folks. This has been a long one, huh? Ready? My side, that's one. Should be right there. Shot. Yep, perfect. It looks a little rotated there at the sacrum. Interesting, huh? Isn't that interesting? Look at those two sacral, like one there and then shot. Look at the other one, how much difference it is. Shot. And shot. All right, that is interesting. Very interesting. All right, we're at S1. Okay. EMG. Shot. We're going to be stimulating the screws in just a minute. Nothing at left S1. Even the sacral pedicle is narrow. You see anything? Is that a no? No. Thank you. It's going to be a sacral, my gosh, tight. I'm going to go try to go a little bicortical there. Uh, what is that shot? Uh, it's 35. Let's go 40. 45, 40? Yeah. Sacral 6540. That is the tightest sacral pedicle I've ever felt. Shot. Okay, finish that. All right, we're gonna need. Um, so we're gonna pull. We're gonna pull the floor out in a minute. Drop the table. Test the screws. And I'll bend the rods while Patel tests the screws. And then, uh, did you tap it already? Feels good. Screw. I may need a macky wacky mallet. Give me a little wacky wacky on the backy backy. <laughs> yep, Mac go. Shot, uh, good. Shot. I may not. May not may that got it. I think. Yep, we got it. All right, finish it. Can you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember, no wobble, just straight in. There you go. Is it going in? Shot, let's see where we are. Oh, I love it. Keep going. Let me have the mallet. I'll give you a wacky when you hit that compression at the front of the sacrum. Tell me when you're compressed. Shot, you're there. All right, keep going. Go. Shot. All right, let me stop. Shot. Perfect. Doesn't get any better than that, my friend. That's beautiful. Sacral by cortical there. I love it. Nice and strong. All right, I'm tired. Now I'm tired. Okay. I need this. I need the drill. Hello. Shot. Okay, pedicle finder. Thank you. Let me see. Oh, it's weird. It's like lost its curve. Not much of a curve to begin with. I'm gonna come around the outside. Shot. A oh, great song. This will be another six-five shot. Shot. So notice how the screw went past the front of the sacrum. We want that. Wow, this is crazy. This is a 35. It's bicortical. Uh, with no 40. 65, 35. That's just because the sacrum is abnormal. 
The sacrum is literally abnormally shaped. One side is, is uh, bigger, wider than the other. Shot. Yeah. This ball tip. Zane, you got to put it in my hand the right way. Nothing. can't see. Help me. I think that's it. Can you see? Suck it. Help me. I don't think I'm in. I need you to work around and get rid of that blood. Is that it? I'm in? Mm -hmm. Okay, move. I need a little wacky wacky then. Go ahead. A little bit. Yeah. More. Yeah. Good. Shot. Shot, finish it. Mallet, keep going. Keep going, you're doing great. So a lot of, sur what are you doing? A lot of surgeons take the approach that a screw is a screw. No, stop, you gotta, you gotta keep this engaged. A rod is a rod, but it's not. And it's not, yeah, you're fine, keep going. It's not just, are you feeling compression? Go, turn. Don't, don't wiggle, don't wiggle, just turn. Good, see what we got, shot? Is that it? Let me see. Oh yeah, it's tight. How come you have such a strong golf swing and yet my hands are stronger than yours? All right, table down, floral out. All right, we're done putting screws in, everyone. As my grandmother used to say, thanks, Scott. All right, can you get this lead off my waist? There's a buckle on my right side. Oh, is the ba batteries on the lead? Is it? Is it on the lead? It's on the lead, right? No, I think it's on my skirt. I mean my, uh, my top, not my skirt. Yeah, do it, pull it, you almost got it. Pull it a little more, pull the skirt. A little more, there we go. All right, so that's perfect. I can, I'm fine, I'll just keep the top on, the vest. I need these uh, step ups out. Please move the step ups. Watch the sterile field. That goes outside, don't crease it, lay it on the on top of that thing. All right, folks, we're almost done with this extremely long and brutal surgery called, uh, called many things. Table down, please. Why is the table so high? I need a rod. Give me a 110, 110 or 120. 110 or 120. Keep going. Step four. One ten. Yep. Thirty-five. Right four. John, you have more questions? This is the first way uh, No, there are no questions at this time. One ten is perfect. Right. I need to bend it. Okay, ready. I need to bend it like. Right L five. Like. My gosh, you guys are just so uncultured. Bend it like Beckham. Right as well. <laughs> <sighs> All right. I, need your help. I give up. He needs his back. I'm kidding. All right, we're going to bend this rod a little bit. Left Not much. Right. And the way you bend a rod is you do little bends at a time. You never, <laughs> you never want to bend it all in one spot. That's like the noob thing to do. Um, I hope noob's not a bad word. Just means kind of a novice, right, Monica? Whoa, that flipped. That was cool. Left one. Nothing broke below 10. 
What? 20 is perfect. Right as one. That is awesome. The lowest is 21, so we're good. Seth Cruz. All right, somebody asked earlier, Luis, he needs help. How do we do, yeah, what? Pull what out? Louis, somebody asked earlier, how do we lock the rods and screws? This is it right here. These are buttressed. What are we talking about? Oh, the question earlier. I'm talking about making sure that our friend here gets these things right. Comprende, amigo? Yes. We're good. We are very good. This is a beautiful rod. We are locking the rod. I need a persuader. We're locking the rod and screws together. Persuader. Set screw, Patel, Patel, go, ah, oh, go, go, mm -hmm. another one, it's going in good, one of our Facebook viewers is wondering what is the system or company used for the screws and rods, who manufactures it, yes, Mm. I don't want to promote any commercial interests, especially not these guys, because they are horrible. You're done. You're done. Wow. Uh, okay, look, to be honest with you, this is the best screw rod system on the market, but I can't stand the company. I do love the rep, Amy. She's the best. She's been here for how many years? Fifteen. Fifteen years working with me, but her boss is a real John Adams. Or is it Adam Henry? Sorry, and Adam Henry. That's what the cops say. Adam Henry, sorry. Sorry, I meant Adam Henry. I had a brain fart. Um, I'll give you a hint what the system is. Look right there. Can you see that little thing right there? It's an alpha. Okay. So they do have the best implants and they do have the best uh, instruments. And why does that matter? It matters a lot. These instruments that are used to put the implants in, if they're not designed properly, like a lot of companies have poorly designed in instruments, then they can like pop out and you hit the dura, hit a nerve or the screws. They can uh, cross thread easily or they can uh, strip. So I love this system, but I don't like the company that makes it. I don't, I don't like them at all. But they do make good stuff. All right, we are done with this. I need a cross link. Hmm. You have a cross link, probably two mediums. Let me see a cob. I don't think I cross-threaded that. Is that cross-threaded? I can't tell. Maybe. Cannot have a cross-threaded screw head. Set screw. Let me have a, is that cross-threaded? Let me have a persuader, just to be safe. Reload. Reload that right there. You know how some people, when they don't eat for a long time, they get hypoglycemic? I get hypopizza anemic. I need my pizza. I'm just kidding. Did, oh, I ordered Mexican. That's right. All right, all right. I'm sorry, Moe's today. I'm so used to getting pizza. These are called cross links. And cross links basically. Uh, stabilize the construct in rotation so you don't get rotational forces that are 
um, because these, these screws and rods don't hold well in rotation. They hold well in lateral bending. Ugh, why? Guys, why? It just came off. Here, give me another one. I don't want to fart around with that. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten these things up. I'll do, I'll do, uh, can you do my side or your side? Which one do you want? You remember how to do it? So, start at one end so you don't ever forget. And you're going to start torquing the, ro the rod. It'll start moving. So just go far enough to set it. Get that counter torque wrench down, seated. Go, go, go. You don't have to go all the way, that's enough. And now go to the other end maybe and come back. If you torque too hard on one end, the others are loose. You can actually deform the rod and screws. Now you gotta go until it pops. Let me have it. Perfect. Yep. Keep pressure down with that so you don't pop off. Uh-uh, you gotta finish it. I can do it if you can't. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. One of our YouTube viewers is asking, will this patient be pain-free when they go home after their surgery? Will this patient be pain-free when they go home after their surgery? No, they're gonna be painful. And the reason they're painful is because we just sliced open their back like the butcher of Bernay. So that's the problem with fusions is, yeah, their spine pain will be gone. The pain that we came here to get rid of is gone. It's gone. However, the reality is, is that all this cutting here is going to hurt like hell for about a month. That's why the laser surgery is so amazing because there is no big incisions and filleting the body open and people are pain free when they leave unlike fusions where they're not but the pain this patient has is strictly coming from the muscle not the disc anymore not the arthritis anymore it's literally m pain that we created here today in the operating room Do the cross links. So you go end, end, and middle, yeah. Side, side, middle. And, oh, you gotta go all the way in, otherwise you're cold weld. You may not be all the way in, there you go. Wiggle it in. Yeah, wiggle, wiggle. Get it to go all the way down, all right, good. So Dr. Patel is doing that. We're going to irrigate next. Yeah, he's ready. And then we're going to... No, it's not in. It's in? It just doesn't look seated all the way for some reason. All right. So we've lost 200 mils of blood. You don't need to decorticate, right? What's that? You don't need to decorticate, right? You don't need to. No, we don't decorticate. We already did. What do you think all that bone removal was? Yeah, we don't do the posterior yeah, cervical. Yeah, yeah. It's different. Yeah. All right, so now we got our iodine. Uh, what is this stuff? Developed by NASA? Betadine. This is betadine. And NASA, by the way, is literally next door to us. Just down the street, 10, 10 15 minutes away. Whoa, 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 don't suck on their dura like that. Those are too big. All right. Get all that iodine out, and then we are ready to start closing, huh? Can't believe it. No, 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 don't suck on the dura. Let's get your suckers back. I need gel foam. I'm going to put the gel foam while you suck, and then we're going to get the retractors out. We're going to do our, what's it called? Put them down. Suck, suck all that juice out. That's not working. That sucker's not working. Get him to unclog it. Fix it, please. I need that water out of there. Yeah. 
Good. Keep. No, we always do it after. Yeah. I need you to suck this stuff here. It's all water. It's not going to allow me to put my gel foam in and work. Right there. Here. Don't suck these. I think we're good, right? Let me see. Yeah, yeah. So this patient's pain that came to us with today is gone. We've cured it. However, we've given this patient a lot more pain than they came here with temporarily. That's the problem with fusion. All the trauma that goes with it. And there's no way around it. All right. It's bank two grams. Yes, sir. So this is how we prevent our infections after surgery. I need to go? I'm sorry, what? You cannot go yet. Five more minutes. Help me. Here. Here, so it's less resistant. Wait, let me get these out. We're going to need to do the drain. You want to help me, Luis? some of these we need to, yeah. all right beautiful take your time we're gonna need a drain let me have it drain drain watch your hand I'm gonna poke here I need the hemostat long just putting a drain in so we can drain all the juices overnight. There's going to be a bit of them from all the trauma we've caused. I cannot see. Okay, 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 come on. Let's not do that. Let's do, let's finish it, but do it right. Get that needle on proper. Right there, between the holes. Oh, Jesus. That's good. All right. I need to put some uh, grafty grafty in. There we go. All right, very good. Now we've got our bone. Our powder, vancomycin, our expiral on both sides. We've got a little bit of bleeding going. I need, come on, man, Raytex here. Let's go. This is muscle closing time. You should have Raytex up. And a bovi. Can I just have one step? Just one of those. Just kick it back. Guys, your job is really easy compared to what I do. So let's try to get it right. I don't need distractions and problems while we're closing. Let me see. Get a fucking sucker tip. Don't just sit there. Make Zane do his job. Yeah, get that suction going, guys. Let's go. Get this drain on suction. What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for I need a sucker from there. And get it. Don't sit there and look like a constipated person on a toilet. Just get your shit done. Right. We've done a major surgery, and now you guys want to fart around at the end? Come on. I need suture. Zane, how can I use rays when they're clumped up like that? Come on. You don't see any active bleeding, do you? Just oozing. Suck here. 
Now you kind of shredded that a little bit when you came in. You know what I mean? It's a little shredded. That's what bleeds later on, you know what I mean? Ditch, pick up. All right, so we close the fascia. Are you tying or am I tying? Do you know how to tie? No, not yet? Right. Yeah, just help me get this layer closed and then you can get out of here, okay? I just want to make sure this comes together. Here is to close the fascia only above the muscle. You know why this is the most important layer? Hemostasis, Hemostasis and blocks infection. Huh? All right, swing up here. You have a clinic today? All right, you can get out of here. I appreciate your help, Dr. Patel. Thank you very much. You did a really good job. I think we're okay at this point. All right, John, any last minute questions? No. And Zane, are you kidding Not me, yet. dude? Seriously, you can't do that. It's scraped on your glove. When you hand the suture off, do not let your hand drag in my path. Get that sucker out of my way. Just to watch my field, keep an eye on things, make sure that things like that don't happen. See how thick that fascia is there? That is thick. That's why we use this layer to close. All these sutures, it's like they cut just two centimeters shorter just to save money and they just out of your hand Thank you. That's a good technician helping their surgeon. I try. Don't try, I do. You just have to learn what to do. It's like me saying, I try not to, I need a ray or something. I try not to poke myself with a needle. Well, don't. Don't try, don't. Don't let it happen. I poked myself in 26 years twice. 
Twice. Hold on. Oh, that's good. Let me have one more. I'm just feeling the hole down here. I think we need one more and we're good. Come on. What is the issue? Nothing. I'm just straightening this. What's the next case? Three levels. Scissor. I got him. Okay. Give me the next suit you're ready. together. And my skin markers. Uh-huh. Who did that? You or Luis? I think that was Luis. Nice. How many more of these sutures we have? We need about 15, 20. Okay. How many you have? On the field, I've just got 10. We got more, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would open yeah. another pack. No, we, he's got some open on the back table. Yeah. Put your hands on there. I don't want to get you. So if somebody's going to operate on your back, who would it be? Myself. <laughs> I'd find a way. As long as I have a good anesthesiologist, I can, I can operate on my own back. Uh -huh. Just do some intermittent propofol and local. Stitch. Watch your hands, don't put them down there. That was blood pressure. You got him converted to Tiva? So he can wake up pretty quick? Let's see if it works. Six more. Got it. 
What? SSEP? We've had 50% in the past, right? Eight on the right and what? Eight on. So we've had improvement in the waveform. Yeah. Prior to positioning. Right? Motherfucker. This is where you pay the most attention. At the bottom. Why? Because it leaks. When they go home, get up and walk, and then they freak out. They come to the emergency room, all bent out of shape. When the reality is there's nothing wrong. It's always good not to have things leaking out. You can avoid it. So we use a drain. How many more sutures you got? Uh, four. Perfect. We won't need them all, but... I'm actually finished doing the drain now. You want to do it? Yeah, I do the table. Yeah, yeah, sure. You don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> All right, John, get the last questions typed up, folks. We're wrapping up a very long surgery. It's uh, lumbar fusion, reconstruction, osteotomies, laminectomies, discectomies, inner body cages, screws, rods, and surgeons sweat.
Hi there, Dr. Duke Majin here. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the surgeon, founder of Duke Spine Institute, and we have just wrapped up a very complex um, fusion type surgery of the lower back. This is the kind of surgery that was really all that was available to help people with debilitating back pain and uh, with or without leg symptoms like pain down the legs. And I've been doing these surgeries for 26 years, done over a thousand. Um, we had a lot of questions, there were good questions. This is the lumbar spine. Our patient had a twisting of the spine. I can't really show you on the model, it's not built for it. But basically the spine was twisted, so he had scoliosis. So we really straightened it out. Uh, but to do that, we had to perform osteotomies and remove all the bones in the back and take out the spinous process, the lamina, take out, cut right through these bones right here. These are called the um, inferior facet, and that's the pars and articularis. So we just took all this stuff out, and we were left basically with a vertebral body. The discs were gone. We put cages in there, and then the little pedicle stump, I guess the transverse process, and that was all that was left. Everything else has been open in the back, all the ligaments gone. These are very long and tiring for the surgeon surgeries. They take a lot of effort. Um, it's hot outside the building. We have a very good air conditioning system, but I was sweating pretty bad in there. Um, anyway, long story short, we eventually got everything done. I'm really pleased with the final result. The patient has um, basically their spine has been realigned beautifully and hopefully that'll give the patient the results they want. We cleaned out the four bad discs that were causing pain. These are four discs that were damaged in a work-related injury. The patient's been suffering for years with back pain. We've been trying to get his insurance company to approve the surgery, finally they did. And again, it's outpatient. For those of you who do spine surgery or understand these types of surgery, normally these patients will be in the hospital for a week or two with all kinds of problems. This patient's going home today and with good pain control. We use Expiral, we inject it in the muscles on both sides, that was a white liquid at the end. Um, the Expiral is a liposomal bupivacaine. Bupivacaine is a local painkiller. It's not an opioid, it's very safe. And this is injected into the muscles in a fatty form, solubilized, and then it just sits there in the muscles for a few days and releases pain meds in the muscles. What causes pain after surgery like this? If it's done properly, it's just the muscles and the skin. The skin pain usually goes away within a few hours from the incision, and then the muscle pain usually takes um, a month to go away. You know, this kind of surgery, probably a month. So these patients need to be on muscle relaxers and painkillers for about a month. What causes the muscle pain is um, for the first week it's basically we didn't cut the muscle we peeled it off the spine but we retracted it with those metal retractors and so they were crushing the muscle pushing on it throughout the surgery and the muscle's pretty upset so it's inflamed and angry it's going to hurt it's swollen inflamed it's going to hurt and that's really what we're dealing with is muscle pain for the first few months the first month um, and then of course you have the blood products the seroma which is that juice that was coming out uh, all that oozing and juice basically stops but it's going to collect in there that's why we put a drain we leave the drain in overnight get it out tomorrow i never leave drains in more than overnight it's just overnight never leave it in longer you can get an infection so i use drains on the posterior cervical laminectomy infusion and the posterior lumbar laminectomy infusion i don't use it on microdiscectomies or anything else laminectomies i do as well if it's extensive um, but we got the screws and rods in, we got the spine straightened out, got the cages in and the disc bases, cleaned out the disc, did interbody fusion and posterior fusion. And like I said, the surgery is just long and tedious and the patient's asleep for the whole thing. So he'll recover for about two to three hours and then we'll send him home. He'll probably be out of here by around five or six o'clock this evening, latest. Um, any questions? Hope you enjoyed this very rare now type of surgery, uh, open posterior decompression, osteotomy, laminectomy, and then reconstruction with instrumented fusion, inner body cages, and posterior and lateral fusion. I'm happy we don't do too many of them anymore, mostly the endoscopic laser surgery. 
Our next patient is a gentleman who has lower back pain from L3-1, three herniated discs, right-sided pain, right leg is affected because the nerves are affected on the right side. We'll be doing a three-level Duke laser disc repair, endoscopic surgery after I get my coffee. Have a nice